going to call this meeting to order. We have a lot of stuff on the agenda, minus one. So let's make sure we stay on point. Don't get offended if I call you out to make you move on. Uh, we have a continuation request for the Johnson Woods uh, hearing requested uh, by the applicant for this meeting to be continued until December 10th, 2018. So if you're here for that, we'll be continuing that. Uh, can I get a motion? Uh, move that CBDC continue the uh, public hearing for the planned unit development work at Johnson Woods until Monday, December 10th, 2018. Second. All in favor? Probably reread that later. <coughs> Show up. Uh, 7, 7.45 was the posted time for yeah, that item. Yeah. Most people show up late. Uh, 8.45. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think it was maybe supposed to be 7.45 and then we pushed it back. So Which is why this time we're not giving it a time until the end. Yeah, when we continued it, it yeah. said 7.45. Yeah. Right. Okay. Shifted it. Um, you want to do the lot release first? Yeah. So this... Um, is a lot release that you voted on earlier this year um, and the attorney for the developer is saying it's not a recordable document and they want to record it. We've never had this problem <coughs> in the past, but I ran this, they created their own lot release form, which I had the town council, he said, fine, no, no problem, sign it, notarize it, they can record it and move along. The, the lot release form that we had signed before was so, not recordable well because you don't sign it you basically just if they request a lot release and you take a vote and oh, then yeah. i write a form yeah. for the building inspector and so it's not signed it's not notarized right. it's not recordable um in this case the attorney wants a recordable document um so just like formality that. so do we have to we don't have to vote on this we've already, already released the lots if you'll just <coughs> sign the form we're going to endorse um, it and I'll have another tomorrow. Okay. Just some of these pockets. No. Definitely on that. Yeah. Can you fill in a date or will you do that? I'll do that. You want to do the sign permits next? Um, do the materials for Sunoco. Okay. And then we'll do the signs. Okay, so we have a request from the applicant at 467 Main Street to put over some uh, material sample boards. This is for the Sunoco site. Yeah. So yeah, we'd like to present our exterior materials to okay. you today. Uh, we know we're, you're fairly familiar with the project, so we're just going to quickly run through some of the older material to make sure everyone's on the same page as this one. So, oh, sorry. so this is our site on uh, Main Street, Green Street, um, and the you know, town hall is up here. It's kind of the main drag of the town. Most of the thought in terms of the materiality and how the building is kind of shaped and detailed is, is about bringing some of the um, character of the downtown, continuing that along Main Street to where our site is. One. So the site plan showing Main Street and Green Street. We're going to be focusing on the Main Street and Green Street elevations mostly today to show you. you just, could you just introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. I'm Dan Riggs. I'm from Embark Studio. We're the architects of the project. Keep going. So this is a upper building floor plans. It's a 32-unit residential building with uh, retail on the ground floor. Um, one major, or not major change, but one change that we, we made to the project. If you go to the next slide. Um, we've reduced the roof deck to happening at the fourth floor. So on the roof, we actually brought all the condensing units closer to the center and we've eliminated the roof deck, um, which also eliminates the extra stair tower, so it reduces some of the visible height of the building. Um, this was the previous iteration that you guys saw. Um, and we're, we haven't changed a lot on that, but we'll, I'll show you what we've changed as we go through it. So, these brick bays, kind of defining the main portion of the building on Main Street, wrapping that around on Green Street here, um, with these large sections of fiber cement panel and fiber cement clapboard, and we've retained that in our design to date. Um, this is the back side of the building. On the back side, we're wrapping the fiber cement clapboard around the rear, 
Um, and it's also enclosing some of the parking, so the parking is not visible from Main Street or Green Street. Um, go to the next slide. Uh, this is the previous um, iteration of the brick bays. We kind of simplified this um, to create a kind of more honest um, representation of the brick that's downtown. It's a little bit more simple. Um, and we've, we, we have, we're not showing the awnings yet. Those will be part of retail signage package later on. Um, this is the current iteration of the building design. You can see the, we've kept all the major elements, the brick bays here, um, the fiber cement panels at the top, as well as the fiber cement clapboard across the front here. Um, this major kind of band across the bottom of it that defines where the retail is, is um, an Aluka bond material. It's this uh, champagne metallic. Let me actually pass that around if you um, We've simplified the brick bay at the retail or at the residential entrance. You may have recalled in the last iteration, we had a, a CMU piece here. Um, we feel like it's a little bit more simple. It's, it's more homogenous down the street and creates a kind of more regular rhythm to the building. Um, at the residential entry itself, we have uh, an area for signage here. We haven't developed that package yet, but we'll be presenting that to you once we have. Um, at, the re at the residential canopy, we'll have signage there, as well as this precast area for signage on the front of the building. Um, this brick right here is this red Hamar brick. I don't know if you do you normally pass this stuff. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So we're keeping a fairly neutral color palette. It's going to play up the color and the tone of the brick. And this is something we're fine tuning still. So that's that's our preferred sample right now. But we'll our thinking about that will continue to evolve a little bit. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. So here's a, uh, there's no easel, but um, that's the current rendering, which probably is a little more visible than. Yeah, that's easier that to read for sure. Down. And we have the contrasting fiber cement colors that are also. As we're very close to what the Alucabon color is at the base of the building. And the idea is that we're really playing up the brick. And um, this is the darker um, aluminum composite metal material that'll be the canopy. Oops. Uh, this is the rich espresso. So this is the darker colored panel uh, material you see on the building. It's a high density fiber cement panel, the smooth texture. Um, this is the uh, light mist, so that's the lighter contrasting color, and that will be for both the panel and so for the clapboard material. material. Different colors. Yeah. This one's a little bit less wieldy, but <laughs> the, uh, the, for the precast, we have a precast base that comes along the bottom of the building here. Um, it helps to kind of visually support and anchor the, the aluminum composite as well as the brick. And this would also be the tone of these cast stone bands that kind of top the brick and create a, a band here at the sill on the second floor. And we're thinking of that tone. So again, it's fairly uh, neutral. It plays well with the brick color and really lets the brick shine in the building design. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's that all double view. And then if you go to the next slide, this is a perspective, and it's the same perspective on this board right here. Um, at Green Street and Main Street, showing how we're wrapping the color, or the, the materials around the corner there. Um, I'm creating this kind of, this strong presence on both Main and Green Street. Precast or cast stone? Which one? It's cast stone, yeah. Cast, cast stone. Cast All right. When you come back with precast, it better be the same color. This is going to be cheaper. <laughs> That's the manufacturer we have in our specifications right now. So we uh, we've used them before, and we really like the quality of their products. Yes, I do. That's our intention right now. Correct. So you're bringing a Luca Bond down a grade. So uh, we're we're bringing the Luca Bond across this band right here, yeah. and actually the precast, the cast stone product would be at. At grade. On it. But, but there's two bays to the far right side. Are those Lucabon all the way down to grade? So at the far right side of the building, so 
down at the very end to the right of the entrance. We're using um, the fiber cement panels there. And we'll be doing, um, uh, an, is it, are we using is that? It's just the bottom four inches is like a PVC trim because you can get that in close proximity to grade, whereas you can't with the fiber cement. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I thought we talked about, that's why we wanted the masonry there because the fiber cement might take a beating down low. Yeah, and that's why we've limited to such a small area of the project. It's really just at that corner and then wrapping the right side of the building. Okay, I guess you're, you're gonna use like a mineral wool backup insulation behind that? Yes. Behind the loop of arms and behind the brick. <laughs> um, any other questions? I do about fading on the hardy board. <coughs> does it? Um, it does. Uh, I'm not sure the, the total lifespan of the fiber cement. Bob, do you know the total? Well, the, the, you get a 15 year warranty with the paint in it when you get it factory painted, and it doesn't fade. Because it takes paint after, well, yeah, let's after say 30 the, years yeah, from now. Right, or even now. It does your 16, paint. you can yeah. paint it again. It's obligated to know. So you were asking Nick about the uh, absence of, of a plinth or something along the bottom of the uh, roof floor. I mean, it looks from the diagram as if the the glass comes right down, flush to the sidewalk. I mean, maybe that's because I can't see. The grade on the on the front of the building does change, and we're keeping keeping at least a foot above where the grade changes at its highest point for that sill and it, it'll be about 18 inches by the residential entry but we are keeping the cast stone but there is there is a substantial sill there is a there is a sill there yeah absolutely and what are you doing for railings on those balconies so we have a, a metal metal railings at the front balconies here and um, our intention is to have a, like a wooden cap at the very top of the the guardrail for that, um, but it would be a metal handrail, like with vertical pickets, so um, the balusters. We're still working through some of the detailing on that, um, but our intention, I think, we're going to switch to a vertical picket system. Right now, we're showing horizontal, but our intention is to make it more of a um, vertical, pick, vertical picket system with a wood rail at the top of that to cap it off. Well, it's a little concerned about people climbing on it. A yeah, more I think you're allowed to do it by code. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it just is also looks more residential than the horizontal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's your coping up top? Is that a as well? Um, at the very top of the building here, we're using uh, fiber cement trim. And um, yeah, we're using the fiber cement trim. And the, the trim at the top of the windows and things would be in the contrasting colors to the the adjacent material. Okay. Any questions or comments? It's a good palette. It's it's handsome. Yeah. It would be a nice Thank addition. You. Thank you. Oh, do you? What are you gonna do with the mortar? You gonna? Make it match the brick, or are you going to contrast? No, it? we're going to contrast. We're going to do four mock-up panels, like four foot by four foot mock-up panels, and base it on that. But we'll not try to match the brick. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Guys can take those. You don't want to keep the buses. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that we can go out there. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I don't know if you want to see another box of things. Okay. Well, I'm going with the, I guess. Oh, yeah, but I want to be wet. Walgreens, sizes. <laughs>
Okay, uh, next up is a sign permit application for 15 Bolton Street, Rite Aid Walgreens. Who's doing that one? Is anybody here for the... No, that's me. How's it going? I'm Dave Bolton, AC Accurate Graphics, Inc. Um, I apologize, I'm underdressed right now. I didn't realize I was going to be speaking in front of everyone. Um, but yeah, we're just switching over the signage. Um, it was Rite Aid, but now it's becoming Walgreens. Um, it's channel letters. We, uh, we, we're taking out the Rite Aid letters that are already there, and we're going to be drilling holes, um, setting the channel letters, and fishing the wiring through. And the, uh, the store's electrician is going to end up uh, hooking up the lights for it. Or Actually, we don't know that yet, because the Rite Aid that was there before, um, the illumination that was there, was not permitted, I guess. I was talking with Andrew about it over email. Um, I don't know too much about the situation. But Do you guys yeah. remember? So, so, as you know, internally illuminated signs are not allowed in business B. Right. And we don't have any record of them getting a variance or an approval for it. And they don't have one. And we don't. Do you remember, was it actually lit? Is it lit? Okay. It was lit, yes. And no one ever brought it to Like, I just find it unbelievable that no well, one ever see brought it that to our attention. Of McDonald's roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, if, if they don't, if they can't produce a permit, we would never have permitted it. Okay. I have to believe we would follow the rules, so it's not permitted. Okay. Show me a permit, and then I guess you have it. Are you also taking away the pharmacy sign? Ah, uh, yes, we are. Are you going to repaint will not the clapboards and stuff? To Sorry, what was that? Repaint the clapboards behind it so it doesn't look like it's. I don't know if we're going to end up doing it or if another company will, but it will be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so. You're planning us to still put up these channel letters with the front, with an illuminated channel letter, even though you may not get a permit for that? We are just, I'm, I'm the installing company. I'm just here. Um, I don't really know too much about the actual material itself. We didn't produce the graphics. Um, it should all be in the presentation. I'm not sure. I understand, but you're, you're applying for the permit. Yes. Which is asking for an illuminated sign. We right. I, I submitted a different permit that did not check off that box. To my knowledge, we were, uh, the hearing was going to be about the sign without illumination. We were going to revisit the okay. illumination question. Um, yeah, we have a note that they have to get a variance if they want illumination. They so, I mean, that's not going to be allowed. Um. Okay, so they're asking for an, a non-illuminated okay. sign. Yeah, it looks like they're not changing the directional sign. Well, <coughs> the the drive-through signs will be changed. Are they eliminated? No. Oh, no. Doesn't say anything. Yeah, it's just that they Everything will have to be non-eliminated right now. And they'll have to come back and... Yeah, I was a little surprised. The signage currently says drive-through pharmacy. Uh, but to my own devices, I would have said pharmacy drive-through. Really? No. Really? Yeah, I'm not too sure. So. And the, the sign over the, the drive through area seems to be uh, quite large. It's really large. It's sort of jammed to the left. Be that large, 16 feet. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not the one producing the graphics. I'm just a representative here for my business, and we're just installing. So um, I can reach out to those people and let them know your thoughts. It looks kind of stupid. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, the existing sign is what, three foot two or something? 
four foot ten is the clearance sign. Yeah. Looks like it wants to be about twelve feet, like the through pharmacy, within the limits of what through pharmacies is, maybe. Even that's kind of large, but okay. it's sort of tucked around the back. comments on that one? I don't think we have all the information, do we? We have all the information for a non-illuminated sign. For a non-illuminated sign. And then we can ask them to reduce this one to 12 feet, and I guess that would probably bring your height down to 8 inches instead of 12 inches. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Down. And I've forgotten what the constraints on the signage area. Yeah. The whole notion uh, this is a different. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if it matters, but the whole notion of the drive-through pharmacy sign. Um, the only people that would see the drive-through pharmacy <laughs> sign are the people that are already driving up to the drive-through mm -hmm. pharmacy sign. And you certainly, at, um, just because of where it is, um, and the and and the way it's um, laid out on here, as you approach it, you certainly won't be able to see the word drive. Yeah, well, that's what we were saying. If you were yeah. and center it like that, actually, that's about eight feet. Really, if you yeah. Otherwise, yeah, which is kind of weird too, yeah. right? To the drive right, whatever. Did you? Were you looking that up? Yeah. Um, so it's two square feet per linear foot of the facade, um, or four square feet if you're set back more than 50 feet from the street. Um, so these are probably the only time in the allotted size. Like it's um, but they are kind of comically large. Yeah, they're large. Let's go. John's right about this. The point of it so that if you're you're in a car and you're far away, you know exactly where the drive is. Well, like, you can't see it. You're never going to be far away. Because it's cut off. It's because it's, it's facing the back That's of the building. That's why I was trying to see like that. Yeah. See. You can only see it from the tree side, right? You come in through the, the tree, yeah, the side of where the trees are. Not where that D is. Right. So it's, it's actually, that D is in the wrong place. It should be sh shown on the other side. That's the way you drive in. Yeah. <laughs> right, so they even need a sign at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sign should be <laughs> like more like where E is, but I guess E is where it says enter. Well, E is so one of the directional e. signs. Yeah. Right, but I mean, like, they don't even need a drive through pharmacy sign. If you're already. In the drive. And because, I mean, anywhere else is locked by the trees or by the building. Right. When I was here at the location, I remember that was a, uh, like, it was like a pylon. Um, look at, I don't know if there's any confusion. I'm Accurate Graphics Inc. This is, I'm not exactly sure what the business is called. Um, it's a different AGI though, so I'm very unfamiliar with their own, with their proofs. Um. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah, I can I'm imagine that being confusing. Okay. <laughs> I would have way more of an idea. based out in California. They hire us as an outsource. We need to install. Or I'm just trying to accommodate. We should go back and figure out what they yeah. do. Yeah, why don't you do that? 
for for to, just to move it along because no one's going to see the sign anyways. But um, you know, no longer no longer than eight feet, and then they can figure out what the font size should be for us. You want to do longer than eight feet or eight square feet? Well, eight by when, when if you did it proportionally, it'd be eight inches by four inches. No, six inches. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What's that? Okay. Of course, thirty-two. They could do a stacked heading too, yeah. right? They could. I just don't feel like figuring it out for them. Otherwise, just would make it match the other one, which is about five feet wide at the widest part. over two and a half square feet. Does that sound right? Eight feet by four inches? Is that what you're saying? I can do math. Told you before. I can tell you the social implications of counting, but I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> Eight over third, yeah. Eight over three. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. What is it that you're saying? Well, visually, when I look at that, it doesn't want to be any larger than eight feet but then they'll have to figure out the font height if they want the right proportions we think it's about you know that's half the sign that they proposed 16 wide by 12 inches high proportionally we just come down to eight by six inches high eight feet by six inches high it's not illuminated so i guess they could they could put it on there if they want no one sees it um, so, do you think that your client will be okay with this? With extending it? With um, reducing the drive? I'm, I'm sure he design. would. I mean, he, they've been collaborating with Rite Aid and Walgreens, um, so they, I'm sure they just have to figure that out, uh, figure that out themselves. And then uh, we'll just revisit it at a different date. I mean, okay. it is pretty absurd looking. Let's <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we want to tell them what they can do in that step, or do we want to have them come back with? Uh, I'm okay with telling them. You know, and okay. if they want to do something different, they can come back and. Anyway. And, and, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So. Replacing the right aid sign with this uh, channel lettered non illuminated Walgreens. Uh, they're removing the pharmacy sign in front. Okay. They'll add a sign no larger than eight feet by six inches high in the back at the ad drive through entrance. Mm -hmm. That's also non illuminated. And there are no changes proposed to the two directional signs. Mm -hmm. right. On that, yeah. on that um, site plan, though, the D is on the opposite side of the drive through right. canopy. Your turn. Yep. Switch that D. Right. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Just for me. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a stamp, this, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a the, the stamp. Yeah. You want two copies stamped? Yes. Did you write on both copies? I uh, not yet. Oh, copy. Yeah. I 
Can I just photocopy that? Like if you just do one, okay. I'll just photocopy. Right. That's fine. We're doing that. Do you want to start something else while I'm signing all um, this? The next sign up station is for Tread on the Mill at 13 High Street. Okay, let's do that. So we have a sign permit application for 13 High Street, Tread on the Mill. So, yeah, so um, you heard the, the change that we approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just the smaller sign. If yep. they, right, if they, um, uh, I'm going to say, have one with that. Can come and talk to us and explain mm -hmm. why you know okay. why it needs to be bigger or something. Okay. We're fine with that. So, and, but will, am I all set? Do I need any I'll, documents I'll send at you all? The documents okay. tomorrow. Right. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Good. Come on up. You want me to come up? Sure. Or, <laughs> yeah. Either move all the way to the all back. The, yeah. Or all the way to the front. <laughs> <laughs> For real? No. No. Oh, okay. Dad, <laughs> you can start. Oh, well, you're going to put the... the so this is Tiff. She owns Tread. She's looking to um, put letters on the front of the building that kind of go with the uh, rustic look of the whole old style building as well as the container that's there um, as opposed to you know some big expensive illuminated sign or something that's unnecessary because it's really tucked down in the back of the um, that park and just adding into that hopefully I, I, you guys remember me from before where we did kind of a massive revamp of the building keeping the original aesthetics to it so um, you know, it was kind of three decrepit doors. We got the farmhouse look. They have an orange insulation around them. We painted um, that container was grandfathered in and it was kind of a rusted container in the back. And we've painted it with a mural to make a little bit of lemonade out of it. And we're trying to still keep with that rustic look we have kind of going on in that bar back parking lot with the sign. Will you actually physically wear it, like scrub it down? Um, well, it's bricks, so what I'll probably do is put a mask up and then instead of, it, it can be rubbed back after or just use something rougher to put the paint in. Um, the other issue is no one, you can't see with that building, I mean the entrance, because it's around the other corner and the door is lettered, but no one knows it's there. And there's no sign out on the street to direct people in either. So it, it kind of has to be that big in order for people to realize that they're tucked in there. Well, I don't have a problem with the sign. Yeah. Or the size of it. On the face, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Questions or comments? If there's yeah. anything that needs a big sign, it's that space. Yeah. I mean, that and if the paint's dry and it doesn't look worn enough, then I'll go back when it's dry and wear it back. And so untouch it up every couple of years? Uh, <laughs> I don't have to. It's supposed to look worn. <laughs> and we just, paint, we just painted the white to get, it still looks like there's flecks up there, but it, it's all clean now, so it'll look pretty against that. Um, just out of curiosity, the container, what's the story on the container? <laughs> it's been grandfathered in since 1986. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it got a permit in 1986. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's back there. <laughs> and it's used for storage of some type by the, by the owner. Yeah. So, but it's actually fine. Actually, it's really pretty to walk in now. So, like, you have the mural on the side. Um, it's bright paints, and we put silhouettes in there um, of, of movement and inspiring words and stuff like that. And so, people actually really like it. And, um, and then you walk, and then you, and then you walk, and, and there's no si there's no sign in the entrance. It's it's just got um, lamps uh, down lamps to make sure it's safe. Okay. 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 Okay.
Oh, and actually, we actually carved out back there. We carved out, um, we actually did a lot of landscaping back there. So there's trees and um, plants and, um, and, actually, and a little water fountain. Oh, okay. Need a motion on certificate of appropriateness. Move, move that CPDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for the uh, proposed signage 13 High Street, Tread on the Mill. Second. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you very much. Um, talk to Ann about the master signage plan for MF Charles. Okay, so we're going to have a little chat about the master signage plan on uh, MF Charles? Yes. Um, so, do you have the? Yeah, we have it. Okay. So I guess when this building was renovated, the third floor, possibly second and third floor, was to be. Um, residential so there weren't necessarily a uh, need for signs but then it became commercial so three businesses up there that want some type of recognition on the front of the building um, so where it says proposed sign location that is above an awning it's just above the first floor that's the spot they're asking to use and you have the, the mock-up for what they want I don't know if I if, so the master signage plan for that building asks for three-dimensional letters. Um, but that space is so small and those letters are so small, you really couldn't put three-dimensional letters. It wouldn't make sense. Um, unlike the ones next door, like uh, Whiteland Books and uh, uh, the bakery, their signs are huge, so the three-dimensional letters work. But like on Kiara Mooney, her letters are so small, that, that top, top to bottom is only 18 inches. So basically the graphics would be vinyl on a couple of pieces of, uh, well, whatever materials we end up using, but I had suggested like a matte black um, aluminum or, or a, another aluminum-based product just to kind of put it as a skin inside that little opening there. Um, and I feel like that's about the only thing that they can do to get three businesses on one area. They are actually, after the fact, after I submitted, they've asked me if there is a possibility of a blade sign, like the Pilates one, which I think I have a picture of that too. But I don't really know where it would go on that building. It's the same yeah. building, but <laughs> that's showing them yeah. to go to the back. That's the only way I don't want to keep that, but. So that's another issue. So if you do discuss it later, you might want to talk about the debate side. Why do they all have to go on that one panel? That's their entrance. That's their front entrance, that doorway. Um, there's no retail space on, that, on the bottom. When you walk in the door, um, there's no businesses there. It's just a hallway. It was changed when the businesses went upstairs. So you literally walk in. I mean, if you're walking down the street, you would have no idea where to go unless you entered the back of the building. So basically, they have no presence on, the, on, on, the, on, e on any street. And what space did they occupy? Did they actually come around to Haven Street? Um, yes. They have the second floor in there? Third. Third floor. Okay. Third floor and second floor. Second floor, second floor is the bank. The bank offices. Okay. I think they're all third floor. Oh, does the bank occupy all the other panels? I'm sorry? Does the bank occupy all of the other panel signs as they come around the building? The bank doesn't have anything on Main Street. I believe it's oh, all on... Yeah, on the other side. Yeah. yeah. And Subway has, like you know, that other side, and I'm not sure actually what else is over there. So the reason we're having, one of the reasons we're having this conversation is because the master signage plan for this building doesn't say anything about what to do about second and third floor, and it's because that they're supposed to be residential. Right. Um, and so, 
I'm wondering if master signage plan should be modified to, t t to identify locations for signs for them or if it can just be changed and to reflect something like Anne is proposing. And now if blade signs are in question, would we ever allow them above the first floor? Or on the first floor for the second floor tenants? It's only one time the when the Reading Co-op came in to rent up that second floor, I mm -hmm. pointed out that you can't have a sign above the second floor or above the first floor. Above the windows on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Right. So blade signs could actually go on those pilasters, you know, as you come around the building, for example, if there were more businesses up there. As long as they weren't above that second level window. So would you feel that that would be in place of? Because I, I think that their initial idea was the fact that that's their entrance. No, not in place of. I'm just thinking oh, as, well as, as, yeah. as a master plan, uh, as a master signage plan, account for all the possible types of signs right, right. now that that is space is available. But you kind of have to redo re that whole thing. Yeah, because so. obviously you can't get more than three in, in here, and so it yeah, just starts to subdivide that space. And there's Maybe there's spaces on the Haven Street side. Correct, you know, yeah, right. Um, I think, ideal. too, there is one more spot to the left of that where somebody could put um, signage, but it's like, there's another, that doesn't look like the same. See, the, uh, to the left of the, the, the big door, that also, there's an awning there with the same, with a similar, um, it just isn't reflected in this drawing. Um, same, like, it, um, space for a sign. It's just a, a reset panel right now. And that door goes just to the ATM, though, correct? The left door. Left door. Oh, the left door, yeah. But, um, I don't even know. Is that... Yeah. The, 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 door, the, the door that the awning is over where the sign is proposed is their, en is their entrance. Right. And the other door brings you to the ATM, which also... Inside there, you can take a, go through a door and go upstairs. Any thoughts on this arrangement? Well, the I think it's 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 attractive. It's a reasonable solution uh, if you can uh, reasonably address the possibility for change. So change of, I think I wrote in that that. Instead of one sign, it would actually be three pieces of whichever um, material we decide to use, butted up against each other so that if, yes, one business, one sign would come down, although it reads as one. There's three spaces on that floor, yeah. so that would just be for those three businesses. But uh, it's a matter of the, uh, there would have to be some provision in the, so either the signage plan or the leasing arrangements to maintain the similar background or exactly the same background against mm -hmm. all three pieces. Yeah. So you'd be constraining the tenants in what signage they could put there. You'd give them the space, but say, okay, it's got to be black, matte black, whatever. Right. Um, so that it doesn't start to look... Uh, well, I felt that the matte black was better than the green that's there, only because a lot of things wouldn't go on green. Most things can go on black, and if your logo is black, then you reverse it and make it white or use another color. Yeah, no, I'm, I understand that. It, the, the question is getting it, uh, c communicating that to the tenants. Oh, right. So are we saying they should modify the master signage plan and come back and show and put add locations for blade signs and change the language to allow for... I think second, they should. Third, I think they fourth. should. It'll yeah. make it easier yeah. okay. in the future. Yeah. Okay. So that's the direction. Okay. So I'll just wait to hear back from you on what you decide, and then... Well, so all the feedback you just heard yeah. um, incorporate into a proposed revision to the master signage plan. We like this idea of the removable sections for this, this mm -hmm. piece here. You, we could add a... We, we told you we could have blade signs mm -hmm. in those locations, like on the pilasters, between the windows, but not higher than... The sills. The sills of the second, second floor, floor windows. Right. right. Supposed to be. So that would comply. I can send you an email tomorrow. Yeah, because I'd like to know exactly where the blade signs would go. Okay. 
And then the only other thing I'd be concerned with is if somebody moved out in five years with this background fade, and they'd have like a different panel, different looking panel. The, the matte black doesn't fade as much as it, you know, weathers in the sense that it gets like, which is why I like the matte finish. If it's a gloss, it, 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 it dulls right away. If it's matte, it doesn't, it, it doesn't um, weather as, as much, but yeah, it's definitely a concession. Okay. We have to have a provision in there that said that it would have to, the new panel would have to match. So if you had to go to like a lighter tone, if they're all going to keep fading, you yeah. replace them, you might want to replace them with a color that matches the faded color. More so. Okay. Yeah. Different, I guess, what is it? Less saturation or less I just wouldn't want it to start looking like a checkerboard piece. No, but usually um, it doesn't deteriorate, or it's a baked finish, so what it does, it might dull a little bit, but then the new sign will dull fairly quickly, and it's dull to begin with, so I don't think it would be that noticeable. Okay. Next up is uh, continued. The clock is set right, right? Yeah, we're a little behind. Uh, next is the continued public hearing for the site plan review at 292 288 Royal Street Meadowbrook Golf Club. <laughs> Anyone who showed up late, um, the Johnson Woods continued. The Johnson Wood hearing was continued to um, December 10th. If you're here for that, we won't be taking that up. Okay, you're up. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the Commission, again, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail, uh, representing the uh, applicant, Meadowbrook Golf Club. Uh, with me is Kevin Birch, uh, the president of Meadowbrook, and Jack Sullivan is our engineer. Um, at the last hearing, Mr. Chairman, um, there was uh, a lot of detailed discussion uh, and testimony and public testimony uh, and comment by the board um, uh, regarding uh, the project and regarding um, conditions that we proposed that would be agreeable to us uh, to make sure that there was no uh, change or substantial extension to the non-conforming use. Um, Town Council was at that meeting. Um, and I think we, we came to an agreement on what those uh, conditions would be uh, and the findings of the board uh, commission would be. Um, it was a preference of the commission uh, to have a draft decision done uh, by the planning department uh, prior to voting. Um, that has been accomplished. We have had an opportunity to review that. I think uh, the draft decision that uh, has been done uh, includes all of the matters that were discussed uh, and agreed to. Uh, through the uh, public hearing process and testimony and discussion with the board at the last meeting. Uh, and it's written very well. Um, the terms and conditions are acceptable uh, to my client. Um, there is one matter that I, I, I would like to discuss, uh, if you think it's appropriate to do that now, it relates to uh, the curbing on Grove Street and in, in the parking on Grove Street. That was somewhat of an open matter that was left uh, before the commission. So. Um, Jack, can you kind of help me on point out where this is? Yeah. What's happening here? So for the record, Jack Sullivan, Sullivan Engineering Group. So um, this is the area where the existing entrance is now. Uh, we're looking to put in vertical granite curbing here. Um, you know, part of the Grove Street. We're creating like a landscaped area in this area. And the curbing is going to extend up to this point. Um, this design's been shown to the engineer. Um, he, it, he, it was acceptable to him. We've been in front of the Conservation Commission. They approved everything. Um, but there was some discussion at the last hearing about no parking in this area where the curb extends to, which we don't have a problem with. There's going to be granite curbing there anyways. Um, it, it's going to be a landscaped area. The point of discussion came past the end of the proposed granite curbing where the, the club historically has used some spots there for parking. Yeah, there was a goal, if I could just hop in, there was a goal to uh, prevent or stop the head-on parking that's taking place now. 
um, and that was the, the, the purpose of the curbing. And then um, some of the uh, commission <coughs> members brought up a concern with sight distance coming out of the driveway. With a desire to limit parking along the curbing, uh, we, we have no issue with that, and we, we think it's safe and, and should be a requirement. Uh, the only concern we had in the decision was there was a, as drafted, um, if, if you go to page 11, what it stated was um, originally as drafted, it stated overflow parking. Uh, at no time shall overflow parking from the club be permitted along Grove Street. The members of the club and their guests should be prohibited from parallel parking along Grove Street. We propose and think it should only be in that area that we just discussed in front of the curbing. So upon the way six is written now is a comment that I had to the staff with a suggested requested change. Um, what is below that is what was originally written by uh, the staff. I guess it, it really should read there shall be no parking, not not just by Meadowbrook Golf Club members. But that, we talked about that. Changing the regulations on Grove Street is a matter for the select board. Restricting what the applicant and their members can do is something that you can do in this department. Right, but, but I wasn't intending to be spiteful to the club okay. by not letting them park there. What I'm concerned about is the sight lines to the entrance, just in that section that we're talking about, by the way. Um, by any kind, really, because we know what we know what the loading vehicles will do, and we know what other cars coming in and out will do. So, really, it was just a matter of safety. I mean, unless somebody owns a transparent vehicle, they can park there. So, should we take this condition out? No, because I believe that we can. What if I want that entrance located 40 feet um, east? Because I think that that's a safer plan. I could have dictated that, right? Well, sorry, not I. The board. The site entrance. <laughs> the site entrance could have said where the, where the, and the, the commission could have asked them to locate that entrance in a place that's safer than something they had proposed. Yeah, you can do that. So that impacts parking, because then there would be no parking where I put this entrance. Right, but okay. to, to have a blanket regulation on Grove Street about parking is not something that's in your jurisdiction. So, what we need to do, I think, is make a request through you all mm -hmm. that the PTT mm -hmm. F, F, um, take this up um, and bring it to um, uh, the road commissioners. Because through this process, yeah, it can only be to the members, but that really is, that's not the point. Yeah, I mean, that's we're point. singling out the members and their guests because that's all we have control over. Right. But what we would really like to see <clears throat> is that that get extended to just a, a regulation that there's no parking in this. That, well, uh, there's two <laughs> different dis things being discussed. One is mm -hmm. along that section right there where the new curb is, and then it also says along Grove Street in general. And uh, we can't. So this board can't do either, so I'm not sure it, I'm going to say I'm not sure it makes much sense to have that long conversation because I think there's a number of different issues associated with that that we can't necessarily take For up. further down, for the rest of the Yes, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm really just concerned with this corner. With the, with the vertical cut. To the where it starts, right, yeah, yeah. where the new granite curbing would start if you put a vehicle there and stare yes. at the entrance you can then you get a nice clear shot because this is a much yeah. wider swath of landscaping for example. Really no disagreement that's what we agree so that was my intent when I didn't want to see parking in that spot it wasn't for any other reason so if you want to leave this worded the way it says it prohibits the golf club members from doing there hopefully nobody else will park there so we'll accept the language proposed by the applicant I find it. Fine. <coughs> I would agree with that. And then, the uh, con the con what am I trying to say? The conversations at PTTF about um, safety enhancements and 
parking on Grove Street are ongoing. They've yeah. started, but they're ongoing. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's in a, it, it would be inappropriate to restrict the parking um, limitation to, to just the members, members and guests. I mean, it's it's either a, a characteristic of the street in general um, or not. I mean, it's... Um, thoughts on whether we keep any of this in here or just leave it as, as recommended by the uh, Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find the... Which page are you looking at? Um, it's page 11. It's uh, condition 6. Oh, yeah. And, and it's also dealt, dealt in paragraph 21 on uh, page 7 at the top. It's somewhat repetitive uh, language. It, it works together with the condition. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest striking in the uh, proposed language the two word but only. Mm -hmm. So that it reads um, the uh, um, Meadowbrook Golf Club and their guests will be prohibited from parking along Grove Street along the area where the proposed mm -hmm. vertical is. Yeah. So yeah. we're not yeah. offering an opinion on anything else. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. The um, other thing, while we're looking at this, the draft, there's two different places, one on page 7 and one on this page, where it says site, S-I-T-E, where it should be site, S-I-G-H-T. Um, on page 7, it's discussing the... Um, it's the top of the page, second sentence down. Yeah. Sight distance. Yeah. It's a visual sight. Yeah. And the same thing on here on page eleven. the extent of your that's yeah besides that Mr. Chairman we found that uh, the uh, administrative department in, the, in our mind did a very good job it, it's it, it's very reflective of what was agreed to at the uh, at the last meeting okay um, other comments from the board on, on this uh, decision the way it's written right now I have no other. Yeah. so um, I, I guess I would um, as I was the number of um, functions and events. Um, I, I guess um, my I would. Maybe we want to consider um, uh, bereavement events not counted as part of the total. My thinking is, you know, if they run up to, I mean, that, that's part of their, you know, part of the 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 function, the community function that the <coughs> that the um, the club provides to their members, um, and I guess I just. It would be a shame if they reach their 30 and then um, something in, in, a, in a member dies or a family member, you know, wants to um, have um, a, a bereavement event there and they can't because they've reached their 30. Um, to me, that does, that doesn't feel right. Um, you know, it's not like they so. They can plan out everything else. You can't plan those things out. Um, and so if I were them, I'd be leaving that buffer. It just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, someone might 
came to me while I was looking through their events and the numbers. And other thoughts on that one? Well, I agree with John. I'm not sure how to yeah. put it into words. I mean, this perhaps private social functions or whatever. I'm not sure. We'd be happy to inform if, if we if we see that we're 30 and something comes up unexpected, we'd be happy to inform the town that we're up against the max. We had a couple of things come up unexpected, unplanned along the bereavement area. We'd be happy to inform the town during the year if we were getting to that point. I, I think it's a great consideration. Thank you, John, for bringing it up. We'd be happy to do something proactive in, as, in addition to at the end of the year to give you a full count of the events. Okay. Should we put some language in here yeah. about that? I think it'd be something like um, 30 private <coughs> fusion events per year, except that additional bereavement functions may be. Or exclusive of bereavement functions. Additional, yeah. No, no, not exclusive of. Excluding? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to. Yeah. That's a lot of bereavements. So, like, after the 30, if they had additional bereavement functions, they could go over 30. The 30 is a mix of something. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Additional functions require approval from town planner or something to that effect. Well, say, unless um, previously approved or previously approved bereavement functions? I don't <laughs> <laughs> this, is getting, this is getting way beyond what I I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the exception might, might reasonably apply. Um, I mean, maybe we don't need language because they keep right. track of what their events are and they submit them so yearly yeah. to the town and we'll be able to see they did. How would you be allowed to have, who, who would permit it? So a I, think, plan thing? I think this is going to be another one of those things where um, we're set based on complaints. So if we hear from the neighborhood that they're having events every day and they're huge, then we have to look into it. I, I don't know. I guess that's not the way. I mean, I really, because I'm not going to be like approving their events before they have them. Uh, and they're going to submit once a year a tally and a list to us. Yeah. And that'll be after the fact. So. Sure. If they get up to 30 in, uh, I don't know, November. They let us know. Or they just let you know. Okay. Let you know? Let who know? Let us know. Mm. Yeah, this is, That's a, what this I'm asking. is a question. Uh, any ideas? Well, I think the way it will work now is if we hit 30 in November, we couldn't have any more events. Uh, however, if it was a bereavement matter that came up after November, we could have bereavement matters exceeding 30 upon notice to the, um, yeah. the planning department. Mm -hmm. We would inform. I guess. I mean, and you're probably not going to be over 30 in November knowing that you might have like your annual Christmas party already like accounted for. I mean, you'll have your schedule and then you'll back out like what's left in the rest of the year. Yeah. Right. So. So I, mean, I think language like that would work. I mean, that work on this. We know what the, what the. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to yeah. figure out the mechanism. Like, who do you, who do you tell? And how does she deal with it? <laughs> well, I, think we'll, I, I would suggest we would be allowed to do it, uh, but we would have to give notice right. yeah. that we're doing it. Uh, so there's a record that we, we're going over 30 because of a bereavement. And that's the only reason we could go over. Yeah. So if we had, you know, 30 bereavements and then we ran out, we couldn't go over for the Christmas party, we'd have to plan to save for that. But it would just be yeah. if we had already hit 30 and then a bereavement happened to come up, we could do it. So you don't think we need to add any language? You just want to have a generic statement in there? Well, I mean, there should be a way to say the under normal circumstances limited to 30, unless previously approved by... Uh, normal circumstances is too vague, and unless previously approved is also too vague, because it gives me a lot of power I don't want to have. Okay. So... <laughs> yes? It's the person who looks most of the functions that just be clear. <coughs> on my end, 
oftentimes we'll get a call very often for a bereavement, sometimes as much as only a day ahead of time. Yeah. So does that mean that I have to call Julie when I get the call before I can respond to them and say, yes, we can do this bereavement or not? And that, I guess, yeah, I, oh, all I wanted to say was that if you have, like you, I think you did a, a year or two ago, you had 32 functions, and it looked to me like the last two or the last one was a bereavement function. That's right. Mm -hmm. That should be taken care of. Yeah, yeah. that's. And that's the spirit of which way are you? Yeah. By the same token, I would assume that come September, you know you've got five additional booked, you've done 25 for this year, you might want to notify the board that we will hit our 30. There may be bereavements. Can we do them? That's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. That's what we were trying to get some definition there for you. So right, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But then I just yeah. don't yeah. want to have like yeah. I mean, it, could be, it, could be, it could be as simple as yeah, exactly. may exceed 30, but only for, only for bereavements. But in any event, you'll next see a total of 35, for example. Um, I mean, that's one way to do it. Or, say, limited to no more than 30 non-bereavement functions or events. That works. Okay. okay. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful language we had here. <laughs> So Thank you for getting into now. Can't control parking, but I can control when people you know, pass away. <laughs> you can't. That's the point. Exactly. I can't. Okay. Um, so, Julie, we have these other letters, I guess, to you that asks about conditions or have comments on that decision? Yes. Right, and then one came in today, yep, right? so I added that to the packet, but we just got this November 3rd one today. Okay. And is, did you read, is it yes. mostly the yes, same as the Yes, there are a lot of similarities, yeah. Okay. Um, additional signatures and... Does the applicant have a copy of these? Do you have a copy of these? Yeah, yeah. So can we just flip through these and see what they look like? Um, let's see the older one first, I guess, October 30th. Letter from Mr. Should we just ask him? Nick, yeah, sure. Do all your comments from the October 30th memo carry forward into the November 3rd memo? Um, yes, but it's organized. Better. It's like a two-year draft decision. So, so maybe just look at the November 3rd one. Yes, that would be easier. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I mean, the first thing here is a use restriction using the, the 184 number, but I thought that that was all resolved. <laughs> so I thought that. Um, yeah, I think the 184 number has been resolved, and your new occupancy load is 427, right? So yeah, new have, as in yeah. new for the existing building. In the, in the, in the condition, the draft decision references 200 seats inside the building. That's what we asked for. We do not think that that would constitute a substantial extension. To refresh the commission's memory back in 2012 and 2013, because it was a there was a glitch with the system that there were actually up to 315 seats that were on the certificate of occupancy for this building.
understand the difference between the words you're using there, Mr. Bonanno, or whoever, or all of you who signed this um, letter? You're using the word occupant load. Right. Yeah, uh, as, we, as I understood the last hearing, um, the applicant said uh, they could live with 184, but they're requesting 200 seats. Uh, the occupancy obviously is higher than whatever the seating capacity is. And I guess I didn't hear a clear answer at the last hearing if the commission was holding the seating at 184, which is, has been on all their licenses that they've submitted for other, like food licenses, etc. cetera. They've, they've operated with seating at 184. So is that, is that being held at 184? No, that seemed to be an error, though. The, no, it was an error as an occupancy load. It was not, a, not necessarily an error as a seating count, depending on which permit you looked at. But I don't know. It's confusing. Yeah, this, this, the seating up and through 2012 or 13, when, it, when the certificate of inspection came out, it had both seating and occupancy load. If you remember, we looked at those right. attachments. And the seating, um, when you added it all up, was 315. 315. 315, if I remember correctly. And so what we're saying is from that as a starting point, we're saying we're comfortable living with the 200 that we have proposed and we put into the decision document we discussed in the last meeting, and that the occupancy load is something that is calculated by standards, and we had that in the document as well. Okay. So, Jim, my, my client, Stephen Ciccatelli, my client understands that. We just thought that the applicant had stated at a prior meeting they could live with the one before. We understand how it came about through mistake, but that's really the <clears throat> what's being presented to the commission at this point. Does anyone have a problem with 200 seats in use at any one time between the four rooms, indoor rooms? That's what's in this decision. The maximum mm -hmm. of 200 seats. Based on an occupant load of uh, 127. Okay. I did too many different pieces of paper with different numbers on them. Well, the decision is the decision. decision. Yeah. And it reflects a number, I think, that's uh, it's occupant loads. Number is reflected in their new permit, right? For their existing clubhouse, existing. it's 427. It's it, According to the math they've given us, it should go down when they build the, the occupant load should go down when they build the new clubhouse. Right. Yeah. The existing clubhouse has an occupant load of 427. Our architect has determined the new clubhouse have an occupancy load of 292, right. significantly lower. But again, that's different from seats. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <coughs> okay. So the. Um, I don't know how to relate what's in our draft decision to the comments or the, the proposed restrictions from the uh, Well, that's the, the, re the request is to reduce the 200 to 184, right? Proposed facility not to exceed. They're, I know they used the term occupant low there, but they're asking for a permitted seating of 184. Their occupancy not to exceed 230. Uh, occupancy, um, I think that last part of that sentence is applying to what? To the occupant load? You know, quite, quite honestly, we're more concerned about the seating and where they've had on their permit applications the last five years seating for 184. Our request is to try to keep it at 184. They're picking up additional seats with the outdoor spaces. So their total seating, indoor-outdoor, is greater than what they've operated at for the last five years, which was 184, plus the 28 on the existing deck. So, so condition 12, Mr. Chairman, is just relating to indoor seating at 200.
Cold Porch, 20 seats. Those people are already on site. Right? It's not like there's people at the pool right. and there's people using the porch that aren't using the pool. And the other terrace is seasonal to some extent. Except, I guess, if you allow smoking on it or something. I don't know if you allow smoking. You must have smoking. Um, I'm not sure how that'll be used in the winter, for example. So then I guess we, we need to just decide whether the 200 plus 36 or 200 plus 20 is acceptable. Or what you want the maximum to be at any one time. Or if you're comfortable with the way it's work, written. with the way it's written um, so the concern right the concern is that um, the original concern was that functions would be better a bit better bigger um, and they are um, uh, in here limiting functions to the same size that they limit functions to today so um, so this, so the sort of the 184 or 200, the pool porch or not a pool porch, um, it's to me, if they're not hosting bigger events, they're providing more space. Maybe they could have more um, members, uh, maybe some more members on site at the same time. Um, um, if they have more members on site at the same time, the seats in this, um, the, the seats in the building are not going to be what drives how many people are on site. They have a whole nother gazillion acres that people might be parking at and using. Um, I don't think that is really going to drive the number of people using the facility as a whole. Um, I'm comfortable with that because they've they've done two things. One is limited the the size of the functions, um, uh, which um, and the, to the 140 to the 140, which is what they have now, and a little and some more increase, right? Another whatever the number is, 20 additional seats inside, maybe 20 outside. Um, um, from what they had before. I don't consider that a uh, sizable increase. Yeah, right now they're doing a 140 seat function plus whatever members are on site, you know, either in the clubhouse or on the course or at yeah. the pool. Yeah. And that's where the 200 comes in. Well, that's the maximum they could have, say, sitting at something. Right. Um, this, this letter isn't really requesting a um, reduction in the outdoor seating, by the way. It's just sort of pointing out the math, I think. Uh, just, yeah, there's a, a discrepancy in existing versus uh, proposed. On the, uh, on the memos that came from the applicant, they state 36 seats proposed for the outdoor terrace, but the plans submitted show 46. So we're just requesting that the seating be per, the, per their memo. That seems to be what the decision says, 36. And, and the, the seating will be per the decision. The yeah. Your commission will decide, so. And that, I'm assuming that's, that's seating of any type. Um, that's a 
outdoor seating. And there's also the decision references that, there's, that they're shown in the plan. There's two couches on the terrace and two soft chairs. So that, that's a discrepancy. The plans, when you, when you count the seats for sofas and rocking chairs or, or whatever, um, and the regular chairs, that comes to 46, but the memo states 36. So for clarity, uh, we're just going with the memo. Memo states 36 plus the comfort seating because people aren't going to sit down on the chairs and couches and have dinner. They just might want to move around. Talking nickels and dimes at this point. With all due respect. <coughs> okay. They might sit in those chairs and have alcohol, which is the real concern. But Mr. Chairman, the real concern on the, the, the decks um, is, is the, the hours of operation. There was a stipulation made by the applicant to limit the west side deck, uh, the porch one, if you will, <coughs> to closure at 3 p.m., and I don't believe that made that in, into your draft decision. Hours of operation? Yes, sir. That's, the, uh, that's number 13 in the decision on page 5. Mm -hmm. The reason that was changed, Mr. Chairman, was is that your commission thought that nine o'clock was was uh, adequate for both. That was that was a decision that came from you. with the hours I don't think that's what we allow all everyone right nine o'clock for outdoor use Julie everywhere you mean like all over town yeah or what you, have you, I'm trying to think of an application where we've restaurants, yeah. restaurants since I've been here restaurants with outdoor seating since I've been here well the food board main and the uh, are those restricted to 9 p.m.? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No. That's a business location. I mean, those don't have like residential abutters on the street. It's really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good morning, me. We'll shortly have some yeah. residential. Yeah, they're all going to. Mm -hmm. This is true. They can have parties on the roof to like rival that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I thought they were moving the roof uh, gardens. Remember? Let's focus on this guy. They removed it from one section. Yeah. Um, I think 9 p.m. is reasonable. That's my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. I agree. Um, I'm trying to understand what the. Restriction D is, it's, it's requested that the proposed outdoor space have a use consistent with that of the existing outdoor deck, i.e. no large gathering of people for functions. It doesn't appear the uh, current deck is used for functions at all, any private functions. So we're just asking that that, that activity stay at the same, the same level. In other words, they have functions, they should be indoors, which is what is happening today. I, mean, I think that the whole point of that deck, the way it's arranged, and the, the building is turned away from the residence. This is to let that those two spaces kind of flow in and out. And that's the concern with the noise. And, and with all due respect, there's been nothing presented to show that there would be no increase in noise or, um, over uh, what we have to experience today. Uh, the, the proposal was putting more people out there. Granted, the building's turned. But once the building's built, you can't really undo it. So uh, that's the reason for trying to limit the hours and limit the large gatherings. It's one thing if people are out there and having a, a meal or a drink or two, just as you know, small groups. But if you put um, some large number of people out there, 
and then drinking, it's going to be a lot noisier. Um, and again, the homes. But that's restricted could, to 9 p.m. Yeah, still. Yeah, it's up to 9. You could always call in a noise complaint. It, it could be 30 people having quiet conversations. It could be 15 people having a louder conversation. We don't even have a baseline noise you know, the, study or something. Quite, then, quite honestly, that's, we're trying to avoid, we don't want to get into a, a banging of heads. I mean, we're all neighbors. Many of us have lived there for 20, 30 years. You know, we appreciate the club and, and what they offer the community. Uh, but it's, it's grown. And the concern is, this is like opening Pandora's box. And, and it's the migration of what has always been indoor activity, and the migration of putting more people outdoors, eating and drinking, and the homes are still relatively close. And, and we hear what goes on today, and it's, you know, it's a private club, it's a social club, and their affairs should be as private as possible. Um, and that's, that's all. We're trying to avoid, we don't want to have to call and, and file a complaint with, with someone. I mean, the police have better things to do. Um, we'd rather just all get along and, and move on. And that's really the intent behind all these requested conditions, is try to limit the activity, <coughs> keeping in line with what has historically happened and the way it's happened. Well, historically, there was no swimming pool. And historically, I mean, the, they're reducing the uh, level of activity. There's no problem with the with any of the recreational events. I mean, that's what the that's what the property is classified as rec recreation. We have a, pro a problem when. when well, uh, but you, you started the statement saying that the the activity is increasing, and that is the activity is at the clubhouse. That activity is it's not obvious that that is so happening. So I do think that they are that the. the um, this, the design of the building is mitigating the noise, the, the outdoor noise um, from what you experience today on the deck because right now the deck is right out front, you know, um, so to speak. Um, and with the reorientation of the, of the building and the deck on the back side, you have uh, 6,000 square feet of building now acting as a, or however big it is, um, acting as a, as a gigantic noise wall between that and and um, and the the bulk of the of the residences. So just from that uh, alone, um, you know, it provides a huge mitigation from what you're experiencing today. So I don't I don't think that I, that's part of the part of the issue that when I look at noise that's what I see um, and um, so it's not I, I know the um, the default is to try and compare it to what it is today and so the, even by increasing the number of people that might be out there that the, you probably actually experience less noise than than um, than what you have um, just because of that reorientation I think if the if the building had been pushed back and reoriented even further, we feel that a lot of these issues may have been addressed. But that's not something that the applicant's willing to stipulate, nor the commission's willing to condition. But on something like hours of operation, uh, again, the applicant did stipulate to 3 p.m. on the westerly porch. If the applicant's willing to stipulate to that, I, I would think the commission would be willing. To go along with it again what we're talking about is more outdoor activity um and and, and that we feel is creating the impact the, i i think that the discussion that we had last time there was a discussion about 3 p.m but then there is also on that that side porch uh a discussion about putting um uh, a um uh, yeah, soundproofing, yeah, a uh, soundproofing uh, also covered as well, um, which then provides that mitigation that that you're looking for, um, which would direct all the the noise um, over to the uh, to the other side, which is right. That's that's what we're trying to do is is provide that um, that mitigation so that it isn't impacting you, and still be able to have them use the facility um, as as they they would like to. 
Yeah. So that's where I, that's where I thought we ended up with that. Um, that's where well, the seems 3 like the, the pool changed. closes at dusk, right? Dusk. <laughs> Somebody might want to grab something to eat or something. <clears throat> dusk could be eight o'clock. I mean, <laughs> some point it is. I think we were okay with that side porch use. The hours of operation, they seem to match up. I'm not sure that there's much to change there. Um, Tuesday through Sunday, 11.30 to 3. They're proposing 11 to 3. Dinner at 5.30 to 9.30 as opposed to 5.30 to 9.00. It's Wednesday through Friday. Dinner area dining. And the 19th hole closes at 11.30. Yeah, I previously submitted us. TPDC a written statement that the existing clubhouse building closes at 8.30 p.m. A letter saying that? Well, we, we don't remember that. We're not saying we didn't, but if we did, it was by mistake because it certainly doesn't close at 8.30 p.m. I think we've always been talking about 9 p.m. closers for, for the decks, for the outdoor spaces. We always knew that the private functions would end at midnight. I know because it was a typo in the original right. email said PM and we moved on that for no comment on that. Um, I mean, I would imagine if the the bar is empty, that you just close down. Yeah. Is that what you mean by historically closes one before eleven thirty? Uh, yes, they always close early. Some nights they are open. Um, they haven't been open to eleven thirty in the last. 40 days. Uh, we looked at the food license, which specifies specific days and hours for food service. And dinner and the license is Wednesday and Friday. In the draft decision, it says dinner's available, I think, five nights a week currently, and it's not. Uh, the license is for uh, two specific days. Uh, I believe it's five. 5.39 p.m. is what's on the license. Did you just renew your victualers license? Is that, did I get that right? They, did, they, they have a new certificate of inspection, inspection. and you'll do the victual those in January, I think? Is that right? Yeah, the victualers and the uh, help permit mm -hmm. in January. So I guess the, the intent is when we read that, it's, it's like we're, they're changing it to a potentially a restaurant, restaurant type hours, which doesn't happen currently. And, and of course it's a private club, so there's no posted hours. And so it's really hard as neighbors to understand what is really going to happen versus what is in writing. I mean, I, uh, the decision says dinner area Wednesday through Friday. In the dinner area, and then in the 19th hole it says dinner is also available 11 to 11.30. Mm -hmm. The, the food license limits food in the evenings on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, they're bound to their, their food license, though, won't they? I think they're bound to your approval, Julie? and then the, the food license Another might one? be amended. It says dinner and light snacks. I don't know that it says dinner every night. If that's not. I don't want to be a party that says um, they can stay open serving alcohol till 11:30, but they can't serve food. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's probably that's part of that license. Not, also, the that's not something license. I want to be a party of. The liquor license should have specifics about hours and its own specifics, or based on the decision. The liquor license would. I would think would trump this. I think so. Yeah, because that's the bar. Um, we're gonna let that. It's gonna close at 11:30. Um, 
um, and the liquor license will dictate hours and meals, I guess, or would have to. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure what non-glare glass is. So are you guys done with going through hours? Well, I all these notes. Um, but they seem to match up other than this discrepancy on whether the bar um, is serving dinner every night, Tuesday through Sunday. Well, not every night, I guess. Not Monday night. I don't. I don't have any objection to the hours the way they're written in the decision. They seem to match up closely to what's requested here. Um, I don't know how you quantify closes well before 11:30, but like I said, if if the bar is empty, I'm sure they'll close it. I just can't imagine they're just going to stay open. But if somebody objects to that, speak up. Um, Excuse me, if I can just clarify, they have a club alcohol license which um, they're not required to serve food. They can run it as a bar room. Yeah. Club, club licenses are exempt from serving food, whereas a bar. restaurant is required to make their full menu available. For the bar. I'm sorry? For the seating at the bar, right? The, Isn't that how it works? At, at the club, they can serve, they can pour all they want with not making food available if they so chose. That's the dichotomy with the town's alcohol policy. It's more restrictive on restaurants and reasonable to make sure there's food available, but private clubs are not required to have food available. So through site plan, which, you know, I, I don't want to put a restriction through site plan for something that, um, some alcohol policy in town that as you know, as noted, we probably shouldn't be serving alcohol without food available. Um, I, I, I don't know, just in general, don't know why we are. Um, so I don't want to make that limitation through site plan review when we are not the right ones to do that. I also didn't right. know that we had that policy. Yeah, I don't either, but I, yeah. I didn't think we had that kind of policy. I don't know that for a fact. So. I would think you would want people driving through the neighborhood that have maybe had a little food in their stomach with their alcohol than who have That's what we're trying to just align with and people who yeah. yeah. align with that to say you should be able to have a light snack, an appetizer, et cetera, yeah. to be in after playing nine holes or 18 holes, et cetera. That's the intent of what we tried to put there. Well, how do we get to the end of this? <laughs> I'm just trying to read through this. Oh. <clears throat> Non-glare glass. I just don't know what that is. Um, which way is the club face? Um, installing car crossing signs. I don't know if that's unreasonable necessarily. That's a good idea. I think that might actually be in. Here? Good idea. Oh, okay. Any objections to installing car crossing signs? It's already in the decision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a good idea. Okay. Yep. Car crossing signs. That's in here. The parking. Mm -hmm. Vertical curbing. Mm -hmm. curbing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Can I open the wrong one? Mm -hmm. Aging. Two or four? Two or four. Five. 
but they get the word clearly from the end. Yes. Can't do anything about stop signs uh, when exiting. You can, you can fire a stop sign on their property, but not like if it's if it's actually on Grove Street. You can't. Yeah. No, at the entrance. So, so the I think he's gate. saying when you pull forward to see around the oh. curve, put it there. Yeah, we can't do that. Um, <laughs> stop them basically where that dimension comes across. See if you but not at the not at the curve. So that'd be traffic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not something you can do. Yeah. Does the plan call for a stop sign at the right at the exit? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. That's driveway exit. The driveway exit. The driveway exit. The town engineer wanted a stop sign at the driveway exit, right? I have it right there. There's a stop sign proposed right there. Right, that's what we mean. Yes. See the, <coughs> some, you're asking for some additional screening of trees. There's some language in here that talks about adding trees mm -hmm. on completion of construction if necessary to buffer screening similar to what exists today. Mm -hmm. Maybe with a little more specificity in terms of the trees being evergreen, the caliper, the size, so that uh, there's an area of screening um, where that bump out is. The client's house is right across the street and beyond as well, yeah. and a little bit farther beyond. On the actual new sidewalk area, you mean? On, on their property, to the extent that it, that they have space, um, especially a little to the right side, to have some dense screening there that would help, again, soften any potential noise that might mitigate from the rear terrace. Um, it would also help soften the building from the, which is directly opposite to Lady Street. Yeah. Have a landscaping plan, Jeff. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Everybody, there's what exists today, just there's a large tree that exists today. Certainly provides buffer down Cruel Street. What we want to do is we think we have a plan. Once we get the clubhouse in place, the infiltration system, which we agreed to put in place, that might have to shift some of the landscaping when we finalize this. We'll figure out something that provides similar protection down to Grove Street that exists today. There are some evergreen plantings proposed in this area here. I would suggest out here we really don't do any sort of plantings for sight distance. Correct. Mm -hmm. No, I think it would be along the, um, the walkway or the driveway that comes around. What is that? So that the curved walkway coming off of the circle. Right. So between that and here and through in this area. Right, just for clarification, we're, we're talking you know, down this area. Again, you have a house directly opposite this building, so I'm just trying to soften the presence of the building. And 
it might uh, mitigate some of the potential noise coming from that word. Or is one time for noise. You had two acres of, no, 16 acres of woods behind me to the highway. I could still hear it. Maybe a hundred feet thick to be able to, to do anything about that. Yeah, the existing clubhouse, just to point out, is 16 feet away from Grove Street, and the proposed clubhouse is like 34 feet away. So the fact that we're pulling the clubhouse away from the street is mitigation in itself. Yeah, you want to quantify this anyway? Shall be uh, additional shall be added on complete construction. It says if necessary, how about as necessary? Any objection to that? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's the same number of trees, probably. It's just where they go. Yes. Trees are plantings, not, not all trees. of what we did for uh, Gold Street of construction activities. Beyond what we actually did, you know, beyond what sort of understood. Gold Street had a butter right behind I know. it, though. So you had some specific conditions about having, like, the scaffolding screen so, like, nothing yep. could fall. Mm -hmm. I know. That, that's my extreme case, and then yeah. I come back from that, and I, I'm trying to understand what they're liable for anyways, what they're responsible to do, what the contractors I don't know that we ever add any of this stuff in here, except in cases like Gould Street. They're going to be required to put screens on all the catch basins. Um, they're going to be required, actually, with the wetlands there, they're going to have, probably have a lot of uh, silt fencing around. Um, Which we show all that. Yeah. How do police details work? How do you if you need one, you call the police and coordinate it with them. So what's the F? If you're blocking like the sidewalk or the public right of way. Mm -hmm. So when they do work on the street, they're going to have a detail there. Otherwise, they're in their property. Yep. Um, that's understood, right? We don't have to say Yeah, that. and that mm -hmm. gets discussed a lot at pre-construction meetings because the police department's there. They talk mm -hmm. about coordinating that and all, all the details. Um, construction activities. Actually, this is a good point that all of the construction parking has to be on site. Yeah, we can pick that in, um, but we would definitely require that. Yeah. Um, you're going to do it off-season anyways, right? So. Actually, are you doing the construction off season? Entirely off season? Uh, we believe so. We haven't finalized. That's the next step once we get past here is to spend time with the developer. Okay. Okay. The, the ideal scenario would probably be off season to do a lot of the major part and the internal work to go on during the beginning of the season. It's kind of what we're thinking about right now. That still has to get finalized, but that's that's where our heads are at right now. Okay. Well, let's, let's make sure that we know that all of the construction parking is not on the street. None of the construction parking is on the street. How's that? And the, the concern is, obviously, it's, this is a, long, a longer project because of the, of the size of it. And uh, at, at the previous hearing, the, the applicant indicated they were going to try to keep their uh, recreational activities open. Um, you know, when the weather permits, obviously. And they talked about having trailers in the parking lot. So if members are going to use those facilities, and the parking lot loses space because of temporary trailers for operations or construction trailers or fenced areas around the construction site, they're going to lose a lot of the existing parking spaces. 
And so the concern is, is there a temporary plan to accommodate the vehicles, the members and guests using the club if they intend to stay open while there's still construction activity? Yeah, they'll do a lay down plan and they'll work that out with the town prior to issuing the permit to show them where all the trailers go. I would imagine the trailers can be right on the edge of the parking on the grass area. Right, but parking is kind of at a premium now, so if members still want to play golf or when the pool's open, if they're still doing construction work, is the applicant going to be required or to, say, use the driving range to get members' vehicles off the street? Um, I think that when the town, when they come to the town for that pre-construction, pre-permit meeting, they'll work through that. I'm sure they'll just stack up. Um, you'll probably just pack all the parking down by the maintenance, all the construction parking and the construction trailer. Okay. That part I'm not really worried about. About parking, no head in parking. We're going to, we left in the part about not parking on the granite curved area. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're ever allowed to block fire road. It's a regular thing. I know, it's, but it's not, I, mean, no, I guess I'm not allowed to enforce constantly. parking, right? But uh, that's something that they should be called out on if they're doing that, if anyone's doing that. You don't want to call the cops, but I mean, if somebody's blocking the fire road. We have oh, we have hours for construction and yeah, the and hours for construction are do not allow work on holidays or Sundays. Um, and the hours are what seven to is it seven to five? Um, I'm not sure. We used to have that in the decision to defend. Seven to eight Monday through Friday, seven, seven to five seven on Saturdays. Eight. Okay. That we allow in town. Okay. Any other comments on this? I can't obviously accommodate the last request here to move the clubhouse. Okay. The last, the only item I want to bring up is, um, I think we kind of skipped over, was on the events. The, the number 30 was predicated, I believe, on information submitted by the applicant. I don't know if anybody actually vetted that data. There's a lot of double counting, duplicate events in the, two, in the 2013 and 2014 uh, pages. Uh, you just count the total as, as, as submitted was 104. I mean, if you take out all the duplicates and some of the uh, items that had dates but no description, it's 120. So uh, events. Yes, that from there was. So that are at over over the five year period. So that's uh, about 24 per year on average, which obviously includes some number of bereavements. So 30 is is a you know, almost a 30 percent increase over what they. Submitted. What was the maximum year? I think it was 30, 30 or 32. 32. The last, the last three years were 28, 32, and 28, right in that 30 range. Mm -hmm. And I also want to point out that we discussed that that a good number of those events are running community events that there's no charges for, that the facilities made available, running mm -hmm. golf team banquets for sporting events. I think we were good with 30 as a as a number. Mm -hmm. I think if you just take it at face, it was 140 total as, as submitted. So that's like 28 per year, rounded up to 30. If you take out the duplicates and the non-identified dates, 
it's 120 or about 24 on average. So 25, 26. And that's what they've been running at. Yeah, some years they might have a couple lectures, some years they have a few less. I wasn't looking at that as a five-year average and, and setting their maximum at a five-year average. Right. So, right. it's not the way that I can no, I, I didn't think about the average. I just yeah. thought about what seems reasonable for any one year. I, I know you said you don't want to be, uh, you know, the bad neighbor or whatever. You really don't. Nobody but if they're, if they're sort of doing something that's objectionable to the neighborhood, you should let, you know, you should let the town know. Otherwise, we sit here and we go, well, there are no complaints. No one's going to call the police. At least have two or three functions a year at the club. Okay. So, I just, I knew. Um, all right. Are there other... Do we have all this uh, quantified here? I don't think we made many changes. Uh, we accepted. Well, we, we said we would change the um, plantings to um, yeah. as necessary. Yeah. We accepted the applicant's language for the parking uh, on December 6 on page 11, but we, we crossed out that only. Yeah. So simplified that. We changed the site, site selling in a few locations. Um, do we want to add anything in here under hours of operation, where it's where it states that there's condition, there's there are other entities that determine some of this stuff. So, for example, it says um, proposed operation as follows, subject to whatever the other entities are that approve food and liquor. I don't know, I'll look into that tomorrow and see how that actually works. Well, I think it would refer, defer to the most restrictive. Right. Yeah. Unless of whether we write it in, you're saying. Right, so if we say that, as an example, they have to stop at 6 p.m., and the liquor license says they stop at 11, they'd have to stop at 6. And conversely, if the liquor license says they stop at 10 and we say they have to stop at midnight, they'd have to stop at 10. <coughs> well, also, I mean, they could stay open and serve food without alcohol. Correct. It's true. Um, right. Okay. Never mind. It's just a thought. Okay. So have we captured the changes? I have. Uh, those are all the ones that I have. You actually um, added that um, non bereavement. Yeah. yeah. And if we were going to add something about construction vehicles, um, yeah. having a parking plan to be reviewed at the construction meeting. Right, so there's that. Um, prior to issuance? Yeah, prior, yeah, on page 9 at the bottom. It's all lumping into the pre-construction. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Hi. Chair, just the point of order, the decision actually calls for two votes, one for a waiver, um, traffic study, and also and for the decision in itself. Page 8. Yeah. 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 yeah, page 8. Yeah. Yeah. Move that the CPDC approve the, the uh, waiver for a traffic study for the site plan review at uh, 292 Grove Street, Meadowbrook Golf Club. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? I'm sorry to go. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Seven minutes late, so I think you only get a three minute break. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you never even have to think of it.
<laughs> Gotta get something in. <laughs> If you want to be uh, chairman of the board, I think I've been chairman for more than a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm doing so well. It was good oh, to see that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Whenever we have the next full board meeting, mm -hmm. we should really discuss it. Yeah. So is that, they're going to take notes and they're each going to miss one. <laughs> <laughs> Notice is hereby given that under sections 4.3 and 4.6 of the Reading Zoning Bylaw, the Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, November 5th, 2018 at 8.15 in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Reading Town, Town Hall 16, Lowell Street, to hear the site plan review application <coughs> from Reading CRE Ventures LLC for the property located at 258 262 Main Street. Assessor's map 11, lots 193 and 194. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing building in order to construct a one-story commercial building with associated parking and site improvements. A copy of the application and accompanying plans are available to the public in the Public Services Department in Town Hall, Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday from 7.30 to 7.00 and on the town website the Thursday prior to the hearing. Okay. Do you want the, do you have anything you want to say? Just have the uh, applicant start. No, let's just let them start since it's so late. Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Chris Latham. I'm here on behalf of the owner, uh, applicant of uh, 258 uh, to Main Street, Reading, um, Reading CRE Ventures, LLC. To refresh the board's memory, this property is substantially located in the uh, Business B zoning district with the rear of the property in the S15 zone. The project has a pre-existing site plan review approval. Business A? You said Business B? Mm -hmm. I believe it's Business no, A. it's Business A on Main Street. It is Business A? Yes, I'm on Main Street. Yeah. Yes, I'm on. Sorry. I'm <laughs> Main Unfortunately, the economics dictate that the existing site approval be significantly reduced in both scale and scope. Um, the low commercial rental rates in Reading, the rising cost of materials, particularly steel, the tight labor markets and trades require this project be reduced and downsized to be viable. With that said, and for the board's reference, the approved building was to be four stories, 45 feet in height, and 14,851 uh, 14, square feet with some parking and storage beneath. The proposal's building is only for one story, 18 feet high, and 8,092 square feet, with no parking and storage beneath. Furthermore, if the approved parking was 50 parking spaces, which has been reduced to 33 parking spaces in this proposal. In addition, the approved project has two means, the approved project had two means of egress onto Main Street. This proposal has only one means of egress onto Main Street. Uh, the dumpster had been previously located on the southwest corner of the parking lot to the rear. Um, and so now it's being proposed to be put at the back of the building, the southwest corner of the building, and it's going to be thus blocking the view of the dumpster from Main Street. As with the approved plans, the building mechanicals will be located on the roof and surrounded by blocking. There is exterior lighting that's obviously proposed, and both in terms of uh, freestanding light poles and some via exterior light fixtures on the building. Uh, all lighting will have shields or blocking, and the property will have an eight-foot-high wood fence uh, on the northern property line. Right now, the uh, plan says vinyl, but we have agreed with the town's recommendations we will do wood, uh, as was previously approved. Um, uh, so the, the fencing is going to be on the northern property line, 
and then portions of the southern property line up to the point where it doesn't require uh, conservation commission uh, filings or wetland filings. Like the approved plan, this building will uh, be used for retail, consumer services, and office tenants. Uh, the building is designed for four prospective tenant spaces. Like the approved plan, this building will utilize public water, sewer, and electrical services, and eventually be connected to natural gas. However, due to the current delays in natural gas service, the applicant anticipates that they will be connecting in the interim to propane. The applicant is agreeable to the town staff's uh, DRT recommendations uh, as of October 31st. Uh, particularly the installation of planters or bollards around the portions of the front patio to improve uh, safety from potential uh, vehicular traffic uh, driving off the road, to install a firewall and fire gate around the dumpster at the rear of the, of the uh, building, and to install the <coughs> eight-foot high wood fence, as previously noted, um, and also to install the shields and blocks for lighting. And with that being said, in consideration of the recent history and approvals and familiarity of this project that this board has, as well as the associated costs and the economic realities of requiring these reductions in both the scale and scope of this project, the applicant requests, as with the prior site and, uh, approval, that the board waive a traffic study. We also request that we be waived so that we only have to have one loading uh, space or loading zone. And um, as noted in the cover letter, we request a waiver or reduction in the filing fee for this project uh, revision since the applicant has already paid 7500 in CPD signing, filing fees in this project, which is now being substantially reduced due to the economic factors. Um, I will now turn over the presentation to Carlton Quinn, who is the engineer, and to Rob Pezzone, who is the, uh, the architect for the project. Um, good evening, board. Uh, my name is Carlton Quinn. I'm a professional engineer with uh, Allen & Major Associates. I'm here representing the client. And I brought two boards here. I was wondering if I could kind of show you the scope of the two different projects, if that would be right. This one um, on the left here is our originally approved project. You see with the smaller footprint and the higher building. Um, we have two accesses to two different parking lots on either side of the building here. Um, the improvements we made to the building um, were specifically made due to economics and also provide a better connection between the building and the street here um, to try to activate this area. Um, so the building footprint has increased in size to about 8,000 square feet, but we basically just pushed the building over here into this parking and removed this parking lot here. With the reduction uh, of square footage, we didn't need these extra parking spaces. So you're basically removing a parking lot and providing it with a building, um, which will provide much better stormwater quality um, with the reduction of the pollutants from the car to a clean roof. Um, so there's an improvement in the stormwater quality based on this design here. Um, we've also reduced it from obviously two parking lots to one parking lot here. Um, we've reduced the curb cuts on the street, as I mentioned, those two here and then one here on the left. Um, as Chris mentioned, the parking stalls have been reduced from 50 parking stalls to 33 parking stalls. Um, I think another improvement here is that this property line right here, it had a setback of two and a half feet to the parking to the property line. We've now created a 15-foot landscape buffer here between this property line and the building and a, about an 18-foot landscape buffer here in this area, whereas before we were about two and a half feet off the property line. Um, the impervious area for the whole project has decreased. Um, it's, it was originally 71% in this proposal. It is down to 66% in this proposal, which inversely increases the landscape area from 29% to 34% over here. Um, 
And you can see here with the increased landscaping, we were able to create a better buffer with some landscaping for the, for the abutting neighbors. Um, so originally, uh, as Chris mentioned, our dumpster pad was up here and kind of in the corner of the lot. We've taken that dumpster here and tucked it into the back of the building right here. Those are the same size dumpster pads. And we've uh, provided the loading area right here. And you can see as you come up this area here to make this turn, we've created a much easier access for larger vehicles to get in here by removing all this curb here and just providing a striped loading area. Originally, the loading area was in the building here. Um, and that's basically it for the improvement. We've also reduced, we've gotten rid of the area back here for, um, I think it was more employee lounging, I think, with the thought of an office building. So we've kind of gotten rid of this area back here and just provided about uh, 12 feet of snow storage and then kind of just landscaped the rest of it instead of having kind of a, an outdoor lounge area. Um, that's all I have for now. Uh, if you have any questions, go over to the architect. Yeah, go keep going. Well, one of, one of the things that I noticed uh, reviewing the, the plan, I mean, it's a, a decent plan, um, but there's a substantial change in grade in the current um, buildings and a substantial change uh, to what was being proposed from the previous uh, plan was there's this right now there's a six foot uh, elevation from the, the street line to the front door of the existing building or the, the front of where the the bridal shop used to be and the building to the right of it or the north uh, which I guess is number 262 the driveway is at the street grade so it's a five to six feet and the uh, what you show is the parking area to the to the south. Now, I'm, obviously, this can be managed, but you didn't highlight the the change in the new proposal. The the finished floor of the building um, it was 99.5, and it and it is still going to remain at 99.5. Okay, so you you are intending to reduce the grade of the of the the entire lot to that point. Um, to make this uh, ADA accessible, we needed to lower the lot from. You talking about the exist where the existing building was before yes. it was raised? Yes, the lot will be lo lowered. Okay, uh, a couple of feet. At least a couple of feet. And we've got a four and a half foot retaining wall which is going to disappear. Um, there's no post retaining walls on this site now. I'm talking about the existing. Oh. The Between the two lots. Yes. Yes, that'll be removed. Okay. And the, from front to back, the I guess the rear elevation is about 101 according to the contours here. So that's that's an issue. Um, that sounds about right. 102, 101. Come up back in this area. Yeah. Or back in the back. Yeah. No, there shouldn't be much change here um, to grades. Um, it'll end kind of at the parking spaces. Uh, you said you were doing a 15 foot buffer, but these plans say 10 feet. To the right. I'm sorry, you're one. correct. It's a 10 yard buffer. And 10 yard? 10, yard. 10, 10 feet. Yard. 10 feet, I'm sorry. 10 foot buffer, but you're comparing that to a parking lot buffer. So now there's a a building face 10 feet away from there. You can put as many plants as you want in front of it, but there's a there's a wall there. I mean, we are also reducing it 45 feet to 18 foot, so there should be so less. It was, it was uh, how many feet away? 30 something feet away? Uh, yeah, it was more than 30 feet away. That's correct. What's the uh, roof runoff, by the way, is not clean. It's, I'm saying it's cleaner than parking lot. It's runoff. not patrolling, but there's still uh, like bird dropping. There's, there's other stuff on it that um, I think that the MWRA would would argue with you about whether it's clean. The or rough not. Run runoff from the roof is much less. Um, there's less volatiles in it. Correct, and it, it's treated differently in the DEP stormwater standards. It's still treated. It will be infiltrated to 80% TSS. 
everything on site will be treated to the uh, mass DEP stormwater regulations. Um, what's the movement for the dumpster for the truck unloading the dumpster? It would come up here and reverse in here and then pull up like that. So the the stripes area is literally just striped and flat. There's no bollards or anything. There's no curb on that top edge. No, the, this is all just striped asphalt. Mm -hmm. the, the turning movement cuts across it. Is that what you're saying? There is a turning no, movement plan, I think. Which one? The white line. I don't know. Not on the print. Cut is in the same spot as the other one. Uh, correct. Yeah. Did we get approval for that from from uh, DOT? Uh, uh, an access permit for the curb cuts. Other site questions. You want to talk about the building? Um, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, we're not done. Yeah, I'm just trying to get yeah. some yeah. of the information out here. Uh, I mean, I'm not ready to, to finalize this tonight. I've got a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, uh, I brought a few extra handouts. Can I pass these out or? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing up the architectural drawings. I have the board, so it's probably easier to come to the Um. So, as, uh, as had been previously mentioned, um, we need to do uh, a uh, one-story retail building. Um, as you can see on this floor plan, uh, we've currently had the space divided up into four separate uh, retail spaces. Um, the uh, current layout has four separate storefront entries along Main Street. Um, these are, as you'll see in the elevations, are basically meant to be mostly glazed storefront. Um, the parking lot side um, is open to the one end unit. That also has glazing for a good portion of that parking area um, with some storefront openings to access that, uh, that space. Um, if you can uh, go to the elevations. So as you can see in the elevations, this, the top elevation is the elevation that is uh, facing Main Street. So you can see the four separate sections. Those are the four separate uh, storefronts that would be for each uh, tenant space. Um, we, we tried to open up the, the building facade quite a bit to uh, get a lot of ability. So um, you know, people driving by will be going at a fairly high rate of speed so they can kind of see in, into the structure to, to see what's happening on the inside. Um, <clears throat> On the uh, left side of that elevation, we have a uh, sort of an accent bump up where we tried to increase the massing a little bit on that corner to add a little bit of visual interest um, for people driving both northbound and southbound on Main Street. Um, we also did a little bit of a different material there, uh, which I'll, I'll pass on in a bit. Um, and then uh, change some materials as we run across the remainder of the storefront. Um, so as far as the height of that bump up, that, that is uh, 
measured at 20 feet. The remainder of that uh, stretch of building is actually an 18 foot six, so it's, it's a, not too much of a difference, but uh, but is a little bit lower on that side. Um, as you can see in that elevation in the back, <coughs> um, that would be towards the rear of the building. You're saying that's going to be in a, basically an equipment screen for for the rooftop equipment. Um, the elevation below that is showing the parking lot side. So again, you're seeing the on the right hand side of that elevation, you're seeing the bump up. Um, to draw some uh, some interest to that side of the building, and then uh, again to the left of that is another storefront entry that would just be for that that one unit at the end. Uh, if you could skip over to the uh, to the next elevation sheet. Uh, so this is just showing the the side and the rear of the building. Um, the um, the north elevation is um, the lower um, elevation. And that is the, the side that's facing the, uh, the budding residents. Uh, basically, we kept that as just basically clappered, um, clappered siding for that elevation. We kept it very simple. And then the rear also has the clappered siding, but there's not, not much a visual interest on this side or the, or the, uh, the uh, side. Uh, if you could skip to the next one. So these are the renderings. Um, this is looking um, at that front corner is the top, uh, top rendering. So that's the uh, the bump up corner, and then this is looking at the uh, <coughs> the elevation along Main Street. Um, so just to describe the materials that we're we're looking at, um, so the so the brown material and that sort of bluish gray material at the bump up, we're proposing to use uh, an uh, acrylic panel. This is a company called Trespa. Look at those. Um, so it gives it sort of a modern look. Um, it's it's a, uh, a very durable material. Um, we, like, we like to use it on retail. It really kind of gives it a sleek design. Um, for the clabbered, which you can kind of see on the, the lower uh, right-hand side of lower elevation, we're just proposing to do a, a, a hardy board type uh, fiber cement panel. Um, the, the storage, I'm sorry, the, uh, the storefronts um, are just basically going to be basic aluminum. Um, that's what we're proposing to do, like you're a black color. You're trying to say that the clapboards are Trespa, four inch Trespa flush clapboard siding. Oh, okay, that's just for the, um, so that brown color, that's going to have like a clapboard look to it, a four inch clapboard. You can do it to look kind of like clapboard. The side elevations, like the rear and, and the, uh, the north elevation, you can see on the right hand side of the rendering will be the, the hardy board. Um, <clears throat> And then the uh, the gray areas at the front elevations, we're just looking to do um, sort of the uh, this L shape section here would be kind of a te the textured EFIS panel, which you see on a lot of retail. Um, basically, looks like stucco. Exactly. Do you see it on a lot of retail? You see um, it on a lot of retail. Yeah, exactly. Let's so. Um, the, uh, the only other materials I brought was just, this is looking at the, some of the, uh, the roof edge flashing, uh, just a gray color, and that uh, will likely be the color we'll be looking at to eat this paneling. And then this white material is, as you can see, at the bump up, there's sort of that white stripe going around. That's, that's going to be a bit of a, like a two-foot overhang, just again to add some visual interest to that, uh, that front bump up. Um, so, if you guys just look in your, uh, that little, if, if you could, that, that packet I just gave out, I'll just explain what's in there real quick so you can get down where we're describing. So, so what we're proposing, which, which has, isn't in the application right now, is to put some um, lighting on the building face. So, the, the first two sheets are basically two wall mount lights um, that would basically be meant to, to light the building. Um, basically, in, in these locations, just add some access lighting to the building and also to cast a bit of light on the uh, the sidewalk and um, and at the rear of the building over the over the doors. So it would be pretty minimal. Would just really be meant for uh, for close location lighting. Um, the uh, the third page in is some uh, a down light just. Um, to illustrate that, we're intending to put some downlining underneath that overhang, that white overhang that I described, just to really make that front uh, pop up, really uh, stand out. 
Um, the next page I had there is uh, an example of louver screening. So this is what we're thinking at the rear of the building to cover up the mechanical equipment. Um, this would basically be a painted aluminum louver. Um, we'll, we'll likely do a louver there just to allow some air to get into the units. Um, if we have enough space there not to do any, um, not to need any louvers, we could potentially do solid paneling. Um, but right now we're assuming a louver system. Um, and there's, there's two examples in there. And then the last item is just a bit of technical data. Um, the fire department had um, asked a question about doing a fire rated wall around the dumpster area, and that's just showing the type of fire rated wall we would do. And that would just be at the, uh, the exterior building wall. Um, just illustrating this just to say that we'll meet the fire rating without really changing any of the aesthetic of the building. Do you have to have a fire rated wall on the north side? Um, 10 feet away? That I have to check. Not off the top of my head, but. It's 10 feet off the property line, but where is the abutting, the nearest the abutting structure? No, no, no. Yeah, it's 10 feet off the property, property line. line. Yeah, yeah that, might, that might trigger it. Trigger. But if so, then we, we can do this, a similar wall construction. That's all I had. If you guys had any questions? Or... Questions? Uh, so it's quite a change from what was originally significantly different. And I, I don't know that it's for the better necessarily, but um, I'm sure the abutter is happy they don't have a four-story building, but so we'll take public comments in a second. But this really is just like a strip mall now. Yes. I mean, this is... Town Fair Tire. This is bad. Um, I see where you're trying to go with it, but I'm, I'm not sure you're there yet. Um, oh, this is like big picture blocking it. It's, it's really just a strip mall, a little strip store. It's JK Market. The back, is, the back and the north face are pretty stark. Um, when I commented that EFIS is common and commercial, it, it is. It, that's why. <laughs> that's why it's there. Yeah. Um, so I'm just not sure where to go yet. My biggest concern, though, and I'm not sure how to get around this part of it, is that the original plan, and is it the same applicant, same owner? So you showed us this piece of property, and you showed us this development potential. And we went through the process, and we weighed all the pros and cons, and here's this four-story building that was going to provide some different level of economic benefit to the town, let's say, and to you. Uh, and, and because you waited so long to build it, now the costs are going up. That's that's understandable. But it's like you, you showed us this big thing, this this nice building that had all this potential, and then you come back and you're like, oh, well, here's this little cardboard box you can have. Um, did you look at doing something other than steel construction? You know, yeah, to, we to look into uh, wood, wood construction, steel and wood and wood construction. All that. But it was not just the cost of the uh, building that was coming into place, but getting the tenants to fill up the second and third floor office space was an issue. We, we ran marketing, uh, quite a bit of long marketing to figure out who would rent that, and we were not getting what we expected for the second and third floor. The first floor, we were, easy, we were able to easily get, uh, get tenants to rent it. I mean, that's uh, the kind of pro forma you do when you, when you draw a four-story building, right? Like, not... Not after you go to look for the construction materials. I understand the markets go up and down. But so uh, I'm just having trouble with it right now. I'm trying to understand what it looks like. I'm trying to understand the grades too, like how far down it's coming. Because it looks like the existing buildings were at floor elevation at 100 about. Is that right? Um, I'm drawing that should the picture of the how it looked like in the street and stuff, right? Existing building. The greatest thing is existing building is like 104. Yeah, yeah, yeah like 104. Okay, so yeah, 104, so 100. Yeah. It's 10 feet higher than the road. Yeah. 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 Y
No, they don't have a hundred. Oh, so, so the thing is, that you've, I understand that we've we've asked applicants to bring their buildings to the front, right, so that we can have some sort of presence. But we just see these as retail or office rentals. No uh, restaurant or. Like there are no who will come in, but uh, that's what they're looking at right now. Right now, it's consumer services, retail, and offices, which is pretty consistent with what the is. It's like right up against this. There's, there's nothing happening at that front right. edge anymore. Right. Um, what about landscape? So it's 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 like an auto-oriented um, uh, building. Um, in a in a pedestrian, you know, it pulled up way front, um, up front that that needs some um, right some sort of buffering, um, sort of a different treatment in the front um, than the way this is. It's it's sort of the, the the right building in the wrong place or the wrong building in the right place. I guess my concern with this is that. Um, um, I think that it, especially the two, uh, the way that you have it laid out here, right, if, if, if it did go this way and you had four tenants in here, um, those two units to the, on the north side of the building seem fairly useless. Um, just, again, auto-oriented auto type of building yet they're really far away from the parking. I have no idea how loading would work on there. You have the, anyone that loads there would pull into the parking, this loading space. They can't back up because there's a dump, dumpster. So they pull in headway in and then they're bringing all their goods down the parking lot, around, um, up the wheelchair ramp, around the front of the building, down the front of the building and then into the the spaces. I mean, that's just that's that, that's not that's not going to work, right? You can't. There's no way to load this this those buildings. There is a secondary access to come around the back of those two units <coughs> with that loading. <laughs> which again, it's, yeah, you can which see it on the which so fine, but it's still not ideal. I mean, it's just in a winter load condition, you're coming around the mechanical space. You know, into this little back alley. alley. It's just, it's it, weird. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it looks like it's early in its planning mm -hmm. phases. It depends upon what kind of tenants we get. It could be a, a yoga studio or something like that, or not loading really needed there. So uh, we are expecting professional services there as well. Uh, so it may not be retail, retail. There need to be a lot of loading. Uh, <coughs> those spaces may be occupied by. Uh, I guess. I guess a point here is that you're cutting down by having this configuration. The the you're cutting down the um, the the economic benefits of the building to yourself and to the town because right you're cutting out. You, 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 yeah, sure, it could be a yoga studio, um, but um, but. Maybe a dentist's office. I don't know. Um, even that might be a little bit difficult. Um, um, but the, 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 the viability of this space, to me, starts to come into into question. Yeah. Um, why that's wouldn't what we don't uh, Why wouldn't it be more economical, by the way, to do a smaller footprint, two-story building for the type of tenants you're talking about? It seems to me that that's that's the ideal footprint. That's Almost that's about a third less, but two stories. You get the economic benefit of stacking the construction, you're stacking all the mechanicals. You're stacking. You have to build some stairs and an elevator, but it seems that you would have better circulation around it. We were already approved for two curb cuts. Not that that's ideal, but it, it probably would have made circulation and service better from both sides. 
Uh, in the two story, then again we have to increase the footprint of the building. So the two two curve cuts one for one work. No, why do you need to increase the footprint? Because then the economic viability within the previous one with only two stories, that footprint will not one work. Economic no, but I think you're I think there's an economic benefit to construction in two stories than there is. You could have gone modular actually. <laughs> we looked into all different uh, value configurations. Uh, so two floor, three floor. Uh, what the return on investment was not coming out. Did you look at upper floor residential? Yes. We understand that the residential is not possible here, right? Based so on what? The mixed use possible here? Uh, Multifamily dwellings are defined as a building or portion thereof containing three or more dwelling units, and multifamily is allowed in this district. As, as is business. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry, Saverio is not here. He had a medical emergency. He's the one who knows a lot more about this thing. Um, otherwise, he would be able to answer a lot more questions about this. Okay, well, uh, can, we can continue with it. We can, we can definitely look into uh, <coughs> residential upper levels if that's allowed. Because uh, personally, my, my knowledge was that residential is not allowed at all there. So nobody, nobody asked me. So like <laughs> <laughs> mixed use is something in town would. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk to the. I mean, it has to work right? too. You can't just plop, yeah. you know, residential on top there and it's expect. It's got to be designed to, right. Yeah, you yeah. might need the two entrances so you could do like a residential mm -hmm. parking and a commercial parking potentially. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But you're gonna want to look at these elevations. It looks like the glass spacing is different for every bay. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the strip mall aspect that I'm getting at here is, here's what I picture. Because we have a zoning, we have a signage bylaw that nobody abides by. And so some retail tenant is going to fill up these windows with signs. And she's going to have to keep after them. And uh, it's going to look like crap. <laughs> 40 miles an hour or not. Because that's what they do. They think more signs is better. Um, so I see all this glass, and I like the glass. Um, but I'm just concerned that that the building configuration is driving it towards a certain tenant, and that certain tenant doesn't really have like an active storefront. It's not a restaurant. It's not um, you know the yoga. If you put a yoga studio in there, they'll probably block the windows. Yeah. Well, previously the bar floor was about what five thousand square feet. Now it's eight thousand. So previously also there was glass, and so that concern doesn't change much. I understand that now it's more glass. Right, right, but let's say you put a, a medical practice in there, they're going to block the windows too. Right? You've already experienced this constantly. Uh, the, not all of the office retail functions want all the storefront. So I'm just concerned with what it ends up looking like if you build it with all this glass, which is great. You know, if it was like a series of restaurants or... I, don't, I think the, a lot of the thoughts was there's probably not a, a lot of parking here to put in a lot of restaurants. No, that's true, but if you do one restaurant, the time for the restaurant parking is different than say, the time for the retail parking. So potentially, you know, if you could look at how to stagger and the that. The first, first, sorry to interrupt you, sir, but uh, first, first space uh, is kind of like possibly for the restaurant because we made an outdoor seating space there. So it's also possible that the restaurant may come in and may take two of the four spaces there and uh, take home. But we don't know who will want to come in, but it's... We well, that has to be planned for too. I don't know yeah. that. Well, we, as far as I know, we have planned for the green strapping on it. We talked about it, and uh, it, it will be available to restaurant, but we don't know if the restaurant will come in or not. So, uh, parking. Uh, well, there's tight circulation on these two plans are different too. Right. The the whole front is different on there than it is on here. Oh, yeah, the architectural and the site yeah. plans don't match as far as what you're doing in the front. Which one is more correct? Yeah, the, uh, the civil is. Civil so is. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to activate it with that terrace out there. That would have to be the, the, the food service bay, if you will. It would have to be on the yeah. parking side and the loading yeah. side. Mm -hmm. But then you'd probably need more dumpster space too, right? I, I think you might want to um, 
you might have to play out the restaurant scenario to make sure that you could accommodate those changes. Right. This site plan might not get approved for a restaurant, but if you were to want to bring a restaurant in later, you'd have to show that it, it worked, and you'd need you know multiple dumpsters. You'd need um, probably a different parking, maybe a different parking number. I'm not sure what that would end up being. Um, you know, the mechanicals would be different. We don't have to worry about how we get rid of the stack orders and things like that. So if you, if you don't do it now, you're going to go through that whole exercise later, and then you might find that you have a tenant sitting there waiting to rent a space that you can't accommodate. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm not pushing the restaurant. I'm just thinking about how buildings get used. Um, because we plan for all kinds of uses in the downtown, and then as the as the active uses move out, the, the owners come back to us and they say, well, I have this medical practice that wants to go in there, and we're just waiting, and it's hard for us to say no. Again, it sounds like we don't know this, but actually, Severio on our team was the one to answer these questions, and again, we did call out last okay. one. Okay, all right. Uh, I feel like we might not have prepared, but he was the guy for those questions. No, that's fine. I understand. Um, we're going to end up continuing this, so I'll, I'll do like five minutes for public comments just to start it, if that's okay. Can you just take your name and address so we can put that in the uh, Deborah Barrow on Pineville Ave. Uh, and this is the first time I've seen the maps, but it seems to me like it went from a building being in the middle of the lot with parking spaces all around it, and then all of a sudden the building is moved up to 10 feet away from the lot line of the people on Pineville Ave. Is that correct? On the bottom portion of the building, yes. That the north whole side. that whole north side. That's the allowable setback for a building. That's ten feet from the lot line of the people's homes on Pine Bell Ave. That's what's proposed here. That's what's proposed. Okay, that's a worry. Um, another worry is um, is the lighting. I don't think I've heard anything about the lighting, and maybe we're not there yet. But on the other side of on Pine Bell Ave, we have the Fantasia building with humongo spotlights shining in our windows and I'm just wondering if we're going to have the same thing on this side of Pine Villa. Uh, there is a lighting plan that was proposed and it shows three fixtures in the lot and there's uh, some calculations that show that it's at, at, uh, at or close to zero at the um, property line. So it's probably much more subdued than than the Fantasia building. <laughs> Anything would be. <laughs> How tall are these fixtures? The light fixtures in the parking lot? Fifteen? That's actually quite low. If, mm -hmm. if that's what ends up going forward. Yeah. Yes? Um, my name is Mary Richards. I live um, kind of towards the end of Pineville, number 50. So my backyard comes towards the back of the plot. This is a vast improvement over the previous plan in terms of, um, at least from my point of view, impact on, on um, the neighborhood of my, where I live. Um, I am concerned about how close it is um, to the, um, that the setbacks are as small as they are on the sides. We also have wetlands that have not been mentioned that I guess are right on the other side of the um, cross-hatched uh, wall area. Um, and then the, lastly, I, I do not understand the elevation. When we walk by this area now, we have to look up over a wall to see the proper, where the property was and, and the, then the other house beside. So I, it's confusing to me to uh, envision this at the same level as a sidewalk. I, I don't get it. So. It's probably four feet higher than the sidewalk. At, At least, least five. I'm five. No, 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 no. The, the applicant is proposing to regrade the site to bring the okay. floor down. So it would be it would come down from where it is. Now. So is that a wall there? Or I don't understand. There are no closed retainer walls on the site. Uh, the, the patio area may have kind of a foot difference from the patio to the la landscape and around so it. So you're proposing to bring it, slope it up from the back of the sidewalk? Right. Other than the patio area, there'll be no uh, retaining wall. Just kind of the exposed face of that patio. What's that slope? It'd be no less than three to one, or no more than three to one. Well, right now, the 
the second driveway, if you will, is the curb cut that would be going away is at uh, elevation 97. And the, the building number 262, which is the little tiny one that would go away, uh, has a floor elevation of 101, approximately. Look at those grading issues. Um, as far as the wetlands go, if you look to the upper left-hand corner of this plan here, see that dark line? Yeah. That's the 100-foot buffer from the marked wetlands. Okay. So it's above that. They're well outside of it. Another question? Yes. Hi, Mike Farrell, my wife Lynn. I'm at the corner of Pine Vale and Main Street. I'm not a big fan of the 10 feet. But from listening to you, there's nothing I can say about it. Uh, I'm not a fan of it either. It's not what we looked at before, and I understand the building's significantly lower, but I'm not sure that I'm happy with it there. Lowering it brings me to my second concern. If you lower it, there's a retaining wall now between their property and my property, because my property is higher. It says existing retaining wall to remain. If you lower the property, don't you have to do something with the wall? And the wall is starting to fall apart as it is. It's proposed to meet all the grades at the property line, so uh, if it's higher than the point he's referring to, then it's sloped within our property to the point that's existing. And I, I think the existing uh, wall that's there Holds the so that I have it in my in my head is a retaining wall keeping are, are you higher than your neighbor <clears throat> well, if we did provide we'd have to grade into a site and that was a lot of keeping the wall yeah. do you have the spots on the wall do you spot the wall no. I think the existing condition should show out of the contours coming into that wall. I don't have grades on his side, um, but if you go to Google Earth, you can see he's probably a couple Well, if you, look, if you look at the, yeah. Let's get some more detail on that, on what's happening. At least know what the top of wall is, so we know what your grades are relative to top of wall. Yeah, so the, the grades that are there at the bottom of that wall, that's what we're hitting in our proposed plan, basically. But that pavement will be gone, it'll be landscaped. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the south of this, I mean, adjacent, is the um, Viking Travel, which is a, a residential style building. And then south of that is the multi-story or the two-story um, multi-tenant building. I'm not sure what the occupancy of that one is. The law firm? I'll check that out. Yeah. Carter calls it the law firm. Yeah. yeah. But we, we've got, I mean, from the existing conditions, you've got about eight feet from the where the bridal shop used to be down to the adjacent property. Um, so I, I'm just looking at, at these two. The, the let's say that the, the side wall or what you would consider the back wall of the building um, uh, will probably be, I'm going to say, as imposing as that the existing structure, except that it would be longer, mm -hmm. right? Because it, their building will be a, a little bit taller, but it'll also be a, a hair lower, the, the grade. So I'll be told their, their, the top of their building, the top of that wall, will probably be close to what we feel with that building. Um, I'm not saying that's good or bad, just that's, that's 
seems to be what will happen <coughs> with that massing um, near your, near your um, property line. The proposed building will be a little closer to, I think. Yeah, don't you say? Um, 10 feet? 10 that's feet. About, that's pretty close. Yeah. I'm just looking second. at the existing conditions plan. The driveway maybe right there? Just, yeah. like, just looking at the plans, yeah. it looks like it the, this building's going to be a little closer. Well, no, remember, part of that is a sidewalk, too. If you're comparing no, it to that building that's oh, there, there. Wrong. That's, that's Palo Perillo's that's building. One is a very, very small building. It's not a building that's going to go all the way back. That's a very no, small you, No, I said, yeah, it would go yeah. the, the whole length. So back, if we're saying yeah. it would be similar to this setup here, if no, no, he didn't say that. He said no. it would be similar but longer. Similar height. Similar, but similar height but longer. longer. Much yes. longer in, in looking much less a house. Yep. Yes. Really yep. I didn't say anything about the way it looked, yeah. just the massing, just the yeah. how how imposing it, it is. Um, which, so it's a very by, small house. which by the way, right, if you if you run that um, that same sort of line of sight um, from the previous right, you said that the previous building Previously approved building was about 30 feet, had about a 30 foot setback. That would mean that, um, right, it would be, it would feel like it's 54 feet high at that same. So that the, the four story building wasn't 50 feet high, it was right 40, 45. Um, so that the bigger, the bigger building would actually feel less imposing than this shorter building that's closer to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Point of reference. On the map, on the corner, it showed a company sign going there. Mm -hmm. what, what company sign is that? And how high that be? Um, on the site plan. plan? Yeah. I think they just mean building sign. Like the site sign. Sign. There, there's no signage that's actually yeah. being requested in this application. Yeah. We'd have to come back for signage. Right, right. So yeah, it wouldn't go there anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, if anything, it would be over by the curb cut, right? Isn't this what they thought? It's a little note right here. Oh, yeah. The thought was that that's where it was approved before, so we just left it there knowing that we'll come back mm -hmm. sign for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's not a great location. It's not yeah. near the entrance. Mm -hmm. It'll end up having people slow down before they get to the, to the curb. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, they'll jam the brakes on people in the curb. <laughs> the people behind them going for it. All right. Last, last question. Probably Paul was Bellman Ops right across the street. By the looks of this, your what you said was exactly what it was in my mind. This is a strip mall right there on the street. Parking in the parking in the rear. Okay. I looked at it, counting the number of units, figuring my head. I've only been in retail for 45 years. Figuring the number of people that are going to be walking, working there, and there's not enough parking for them to make any money. Okay, because the, the people that work there are going to have to uh, park. Also, you're absolutely right with those two end units. They're going to be absolutely useless. Why you? I heard you mention something about wanting to push buildings out toward the street. Did you say that? <coughs> well, in in general, for the for the South Main Street corridor development, if there is going to be commercial development along that corridor, the business a stripe, if you will, it's uh, somewhat better to have them closer to the street, visible, uh, than have them pushed back adjacent to the existing residential zone which is behind it. In some respects, I agree with that. Starting at the restaurant that's about probably 600, 600 yards down, it tends to be walking distance. Restaurant? Um, it's Anthony's. Anthony's. Okay. I don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah. But people tend to walk this strip. They walk from about there. They walk up to the t uh, up through the town. Okay? Nobody walks down with their talking about putting their place. As he said, you're relying strictly on people driving. Personally, I would totally go against what you're saying. I would push the building back and you wash away the street line when you do that. It's bad planning. 
it's, it's just bad for the street. You, you, it's just a mall at that point. We don't want to put, we don't want to plan for the today's condition. We want to work it. to, yeah, work to change it so that it is inviting, so that people are walking, so that traffic does slow down. And, and I and, and all I agree of that with stuff, you, which is what happens. Have tried to walk across that street, which well, is not across, well, not across. Figure that yeah. part out later. It's a different story. There you go. Right. All right. Um, I'm sorry. I did say last question, but I know you had your hand up before in the back. Oh, I just I have a concern about um, restaurants going in there um, just for traffic, but also that dumpster is awfully close to. Our property, right? Yeah, we're at Ten Pine Vale. Right. So, so that's that's why I was there. saying they would have to play out the whole scenario to show us where they go. Because if they started pushing it to the back, we'd say no, right? So then it doesn't work, and then they can't have a restaurant. Right. I, I think there's also a big concern about the, the traffic. So we already know that there's a lot of problems with traffic on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this road is not easy to get in and out of. Mm -hmm. You know, by taking left or right hand turns. With this moving from, you know, maybe more of a commercial space to more retail oriented space, you know, I think this is a big traffic concern. Well, it, it, at the same time, we're, the town has an outstanding uh, request, I guess, with the state for what they call a road diet, which would change the lane configuration on that piece of the Main Street entirely. There would be one lane each direction with a um, left and right turning lane in the center with bike lanes and so forth. That'll make the bagel world great. <laughs> we'd be lucky to have bagel world traffic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's continue this, do a little more work on this, figure out where we're really going. Yeah. Um, when's the next meeting? December 10th. Can you come back for that? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, please the the talk to the applicant. So so don't look at the lighting plan. Have to oh, and no. it doesn't look like any of the we'll building lighting. Hey, uh, hold on, guys. Sorry. Uh, I thought there was a light fixture on the left side that was the counter for. I can answer that. Um, yeah. In the DRT meeting, they asked for the building lights on the plan, so we that is on our list to revise. I think it was on the engineering comments. So we'll okay. have building okay. lights on the We just had the DRT on uh, Halloween, so um, we were told uh, to or fly the ointment by revising. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's only one service light or something. So. By, the, by the way, has any of us, any, have they figured out just what it'll cost or, or what is under there that they may be, that may be slate? Wait. When it, I don't know what. You rock. That's their problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's not a problem if you do a plastic. I probably assume it is some bedrock in there. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to do that for sure. You, you haven't done one or you don't have a I haven't seen one. Okay. Um, some work to do. Well, you know, there's some evidence when they removed the uh, previous building, prison, I would imagine. I mean, if it's just some sort of crown of, of uh, bedrock, of granite or something that's coming out for the site, so you could probably take that off. But if it's, you know, a significant layer, you're going to have to raise that building elevation and then... That's going to change some things. That's why I said that. That's not a minor amendment, by the way. So <laughs> if you don't know that beforehand, you're going to be paying three application fees. <laughs> so on the 10th, we have, um, we're expecting a master signage plan application um, at 7.30. And then we could do this at like 7, maybe at like, let me think about this. Maybe at 7.45. And then do Johnson. What's at 8.15? You mean for noticing it? That's what no, you're we don't have to notice. I mean, just uh, to tell them. Uh, yeah, but is it going to be agenda. significant? Is it going to be significant later tonight? You said you have an application coming no. before that. No. I don't think so. I mean, like, I guess it's tricky to know, but. I don't want to put Johnson Woods in front of anything because then it just ends up being a big gap in time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. <It's> so maybe <laughs> seven forty-five on the top of this. We need a motion to continue it. Yeah. Any public hearing? Move that the CPBC continue the public hearing for the proposal at 258 Main Street until Monday, December 10th at 7.45. Yep. All in favor? 